and I want to thank all the performers. Uh, now, uh, let me take this opportunity to invite uh, Bernard Adams and Lowe to continue with the program from there. Then the other entertainers will come at, at interlude. Adam Solo. Thank you very much, Bob Madanji. And as you have listened to the entertainment, you have seen it is cultural entertainment. And cultural because Jaramogi was a man of many worlds. And one of his worlds was culture. One of the reasons that we are here in Ofafa Memorial Hall, and people have been asking, since there are so many people who have turned up, why wasn't this occasion, for example, held in this, a bigger place? The reason why this time the family decided to have the 30th anniversary in Ofafa Memorial Hall is because it has a history of the struggle of Jaramogi. Ambrose of Fafa, who this hall is named after, was one of the nationalists who suffered and was killed because of the national struggle. He was a councillor in Nairobi, and in 1953, during the height of the Mau Mau, he was killed. And the then colonialists tried to say that it was the Kikuyu Mau Mau who had killed Ofafa. And they were trying to sow the seed of discord between the Kikuyu and the Luo. And Jaramogi, who was then the care of the Luo Union, or the president of the Luo Union, when he heard that skirmishes between the Kikuyu and the Luo were about to take place because of the death of Ofafa, Jaramogi rushed to Nairobi. And as Raila Odinga and Oburu Odinga would tell you, Jaramogi sought to raise funds amongst the Luos of East Africa. He went with Raila to Uganda, and he went with Oburu to Tanzania, and they can tell you all the places they went, raising funds that ended up in the building of this memorial hall. So the Jaramogi family thought it befitting that in the 30th anniversary, this memorial should not be in Kango Kajaramogi, but should be instead in Ofafa Memorial Hall to capture the culture and memorialization of Jaramogi, the culture man and the nationalist. And with that introduction, let me call the governor of Kisumu County Professor Nyang Nyongo, to welcome you to the county. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Professor Adam Tulo, for uh, that fantastic introduction to why we are here today. But as Governor of Kisumu, I want to welcome you, all of you, for uh, showing such a big and important respect to Jaramogi and Kisumu County by coming here today for this memorial. I also want to thank, well, before I go very far, the team that made it possible for us to meet in this hall today. The history of this hall for the last 30 years or so is something that will be told later. But what we see here today 
two weeks ago, we would not have been here. I want to thank my deputy governor, Dr. Willie, and the Minister for Culture and Gender and Social Services, Mweshimiwa Wadiaga, Beatrice, and particularly Abala Wanga, the city manager, and the team that worked here tirelessly. I thank you all for making the, us meet here this morning and this today. But more particularly, as I welcome you to Kisumu, all of you, I also want to thank the following people for coming here, especially, first, Mama Margaret Kenyatta. You are coming here today, given the history you just had, is very symbolic. We are reliving and we are living. We are reliving the past and living the future. And it is good you are here today with your Dinga family to lay the foundation for this future once more. Thank you very much for coming. I also want to thank very much today for coming here for the political significance of your arrival, Ambassador Olaro Tunu from Uganda. From especially for a few guests whose being here today as we revive of half a memorial hall is very symbolic. Let me also thank Gitu Kaengeri, Mze Gitu Kaengeri, a veteran of the Mau Mau struggle. I am told that Gitu is about 100 years old, and yet he came here today to make sure that he's present on this occasion. Let us respect Mze Gitu Kaengeri with our applause. Thank you very much. I also want to thank, finally, I would have thanked you all who have come here, but Mama Ryan Bogo. Mama Ryan Bogo, where is she? She is there. Now, if you know the history of that mama in Nairobi and Iluo politics and natural politics, it is good he is here to represent that tradition of valiant, valiant women in Kenya who have been part and parcel of this struggle. And finally, the family of Jaramogi Oginga Odinga who made it this possible. Led by Oburo Odinga, now the Dwayan of the family, and Rael Arela Odinga, Arela Molo Odinga whose family now bears the responsibility of making sure that Jaramogi's legacy lives in the political history of this nation. I welcome you all today. Thank you very much for coming to Kisumu. We are honored. We are pleased. We thank God for the sermon this morning that laid the ground and the road for the future. Buana Yesu Asifiwe. Hallelujah. Karibuni Kisumu. Thank you very much, Governor Anyang Nyongo. As you know, the Jaramogi family is today remembering Jaramogi and has asked us, all of us and Kenyans of all walks of life, to be here. And after Jaramogi died, again from a cultural perspective, it was Dr. Buru Odinga who took over the mantle of culturally and leading the family. In fact, when he was succeeding his father as the MP for Bondo in 1994, he made these remarks that here at home, I'm the leader. But outside there, politically, Raila is my leader. So let me now call the leader of the Jaramogi family after the death of Jaramogi. Dr. Buru Odinga, Atar Komodo, Buru Kabuta Inga Kunja. Karim. Protocols observed, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to take this opportunity to welcome you to this very, very auspicious occasion, a very, very important event for us as a family. And I'm told 
by Mr. Balawanga that there is a small video, there is a, small video. A, a very small one for five seconds which he wants to play and then we proceed. Must be a champion of the social, political and economic development of the people. It must thus seek to report on the efforts of the people to bring about these developments. The press must indeed go further than this and champion those social, political and economic systems best suited for the development of Africa. In a nutshell, the press must be involved in championing the correct direction of development in Africa and the culture on which African socialism has arrived here without the consent of the total but only some papers which when there is anything good about me or good about somebody whom they have selected not to publicize then that one they will play down and even put it in a hidden corner somewhere. <laughs> but when something comes bad about Odinga, they will make the headline. <laughs> yeah, that was uh, a statement Jaramogi made in London. There was uh, a scandal which was uh, in the Times. Uh, in London, and we were there with uh, Othigo Tieno. And Othigo Tieno insisted that Michael Blundell made a statement which was given prominence in the British press, and Jaramogi had the right to reply. And Jaramogi was replying to those scandalous statements which appeared in the British press. That was made in London. And that time I was also around there. That's the time I was going to Russia. Now, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I want to take this opportunity to welcome all of you to this auspicious occasion, uh, as I had said before, and also to introduce members of our family who are present here, uh, the Jaramogi family. I would like them, I'm not going to introduce each one of them individually because there are many. Jaramogi has grandchildren, great-grandchildren, and he has, his uh, wives are still alive. Those wives were in the church. If you saw them, then you would know Jar Jaramogi's choice. Jaramogi was a very choosy person. He had very beautiful wives. Yes, and they are still here, Betty and, uh, and Mama Susan. Uh, can they all stand the Jaramogi Karumaindo? The Karumaindo of Jaramogi. Please st stand up, led by Mama Betty and Mama Susan uh, there. And uh, Professor King, but she's going to speak. So uh, uh, I don't know whether that is all of them. Uh, they are not... That is not all of them. But anyway, those who are not there, uh, Sante Nisana, uh, the members of my family. Now, I just want to also take this opportunity to introduce Mama Margaret Kenyatta and one of the sisters-in-law of hers who was, who was a, a student with my sisters. Uh, they have come here to represent uh, their family, uh, the former president, uh, His Excellency Uru Kenyatta was not able to come personally, he, is a, he has an engagement in uh, DRC Congo and his brother Muhoho has also sent uh, his uh, greetings to all, to you. He is also away, he is out of the country. And Mamangina, all of them 
have sent greetings to you. And particularly Mamangina, we have very, very fond memories of her. She was a very good friend of my mom, Mary. She, was, she used to call Mary, my mom Mary. And uh, when you go back, please pass our best regards to her. Our family has very, very fond memories of Mze Kenyatta. If you go to Susan's house here in Milimani, you will find a room which was dedicated to Mze Kenyatta. And that is where he used to sleep. That is where he used to have his security there and himself sleeping there uh, in those very, very good years. And I also want to tell you people who think that there was a, a very, very big rift between Jaramogi and Mze Kenyatta. Mze Kenyatta was respected by Jaramogi and Jaramogi regarded Mze Kenyatta to be his hero up to the time of death when Jaramogi was mourning Mze Kenyatta he mourned him as a hero. They disagreed on ideological issues. The disagreements were ideological. There is, Jaramogi believed in one way he was supposed to del deliver services to the people and Mze Kenyatta was uh, believed in another one. And because of that, some people are mistaking that there was, that, that, that means the Kenyatta was against the Luo. Kenyatta was not against the Luo. The, and the disagreement between the families were not tribal. They were not ethnic. They were ideological. And therefore they were genuine ideological differences which should happen in a healthy political atmosphere all over the world. So we appreciate and we continue will continue to cement those relationships. We shall continue to revive and correct whatever mistakes. If there were any mistakes made by them, we shall correct them. And we shall remain friends forever with the Kenyatta family. We are your friends forever. Thank you and welcome here. Now, I also want to say that this year, which is the 30th anniversary of Jaramogi's uh, demise. This is the year also which marks the 40th anniversary of my mom's death. Unfortunately, I want to tell you that my mother died when Raila was in detention. Some of you don't know how painful it is when your mom is buried in your absence, you are in prison. We try to plead with the authorities to release him, at least to just come and uh, say bye-bye to his mom, whom he loved greatly, whom he loved dearly. But they just refused, and they did not even want to, the information to reach him that his mother had died. Only Ida found some way of sneaking that information to him, and that is how he got it. But even when we met him three months after, they still thought Raila was not aware his mother had died, even though he had already gotten the information much earlier. So when we went to see him with Ida, we were seated and we were telling him that, you know, we lost our mom, and he pretended to be, to, to be crying. But he had already known. So uh, those are some of the historical things which happened that time. But uh, you can see Raila with all those tribulations, being in jail for over eight years, he's still going strong. Anybody who, and anybody who thinks that, you know, you can see Uhuru is still very strong. How about Raila? Just as a child, isn't it? A small child. So, that, uh, I just want to say that the man we are celebrating today, the man we are celebrating today, Jaramogi Ogingo Dinga, 
was a very, very committed family man. He was a committed family man, and he was also committed to this country, and when he died, I can tell you there's a time I disagreed with him. I was disagreeing with Jaramogi because I was telling him, Baba, these people have given you too much trouble. You have been in detention and you came out so emancipated and you had lost so much weight because of all the thoughts in, 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 in prison. Why don't you just leave the politics alone and concentrate on your businesses so that you can revive your businesses? But Jaramogi told me that my son, I have lived with you all these years, but it appears you don't know me. You don't know the real Jaramogi. My, me, all those things you are talking about, which called businesses and small things like those, only take less than a quarter of my heart. Everything else goes to the people. That thing you tell me to leave politics is my life and I will not leave it. I will fight for justice and I will fight for the people of Kenya until I die. That was Jaramogi's, that was Jaramogi. Therefore, I don't want to continue ma much more than that. I just want to thank all the other participants who have come from far and wide to come and give lectures to us this afternoon. And I also want to say thank you very much to Professor Nyang Nyongo. Without Professor's heart, big heart, without his generosity, without his commitment to the cause, this occasion should not have happened. All the things which have happened here have happened because of his personal guidance and commitment and a very reliable uh, lieutenant like Abala Wanga. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And now, who is coming? Okay, thank you. Oh, Musa Skuria. Okay. Okay, I thank you very much. Let the uh, Nini take over. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Buru. Na karibu sana waziri Moses Kuria. That's why you are here in commotion. Can you just bring him forward slowly? Let me also recognize Governor Wanga. Let me also recognize Mama County. Ruth Odinga was not present when the family was introduced. And as Okay. Okay. Okay, I'll give uh, Dr. Buru, as I told you, he's the leader of the family. He'll invite the rest of the family. Uh, now, I would like to take this opportunity to invite my sister, Dr. Akinyi Wenwa, to come and speak on behalf of all the... Uh, uh, the female gender in our family. Hello? You said Oburu is taller than me. Good afternoon, everybody. Please. Hello, I'm talking. Please keep quiet. I'm a teacher. I don't talk when people are talking. Please, please keep quiet. Keep quiet. Keep quiet. Keep quiet. Yes, keep quiet. Yeah, this is... Yes, I, I'm... My name is Wenwa Akinyi. Oh, no, it's not Akinyi Wenwa. Mark Wenwa Akinyi. Of all the girls in the family, I 
I'm not the eldest, but I'm the first of the girls. Excuse yeah, don't... those behind there. Can you please keep quiet? Please. This is a very solemn tribute to Jaramogi. Can we please have silence please. so that we listen to the speakers? Please. So, uh, my name is Aki Wenwa Akinyi, not Akinyi Wenwa. Please, it's not the other way around. And uh, before I talk, I want to introduce my sisters. I know they had already gotten up, but I'm supposed to represent the Jaramogi's daughter. So, please stand up wherever you are. I want to also correct uh, there are people who have been wondering why, when you. Sh oh, my good. Please keep quiet. Mr. Gina, I can see you. Yeah, uh, please keep quiet, everybody, so, let's, uh, so that we don't take much time. So a lot of people have been wondering why, why when, we, when you see pictures of Jaramogi's uh, family or earlier life, that it, you are, it's only us, yeah, my mother's children. It is not because of any discrimination. I want to tell you that a lot of people believe that Jaramogi was polygamous, but he was not really polygamous as such my second the second my my first stepmother was married after oburu was already married and in fact my oburu's son is older than our eldest uh, step or half sister who is also called akinyi walkoa so uh, let me introduce so this is uh, Akinyi Walkoa is the eldest, and by the time she was born, I was actually in Form 3. And Oburu was already married and already had a son. So you can see, and it was my mother's cousin. It's my mother who forced my father to get married again because people were laughing at her, saying she's a very jealous woman who cannot entertain or accommodate a co-wife. And so she brought her cousin and forced my father to marry her. Then, Akinyi Walkoa... <laughs> That is true. That's true. So uh, then uh, my, my second stepmother, you've seen second, Susan. So the daughter is Anyango, uh, Emily Anyango, Anyango Dumpoda, and she's an MC in Kisumu County. Uh, there is uh, Pauline, uh, Pauline Oginga, or Kanya Bondo. She's a chief, chief officer of health in uh, Mombasa. And now Nyakamami, my mother's uh, last born, who is also uh, the women rep of Kisumu County. So before I say anything, I'd like her to say something on behalf of the others. I'm a bit shorter. I'm, I'm, I'm actually very short. Asante. Thank you very much. On behalf of Kisumu County, I would like to say Karibuni Kisumu. This is Ruth Odinga, Mama County Kisumu. So you're all welcome. I'm the last, me, Mama County. Oh, there's the other Mama County, first lady. <laughs> you're all welcome, and I won't want to say much. I only want to say one thing. When my brother Buru stood here, he said that, uh, the, he talked a lot about his father. But I want to also say one, that if any of you want to see Jaramogi alive, Look at me, from my hair to my toe. My jara mogi muna no kan. A chal kode kadaz mane oburu ji wachon oburu fast bo no buru chal kode. To baba ne wachon ega ni ni a a ma chal kode in choka cha made nyona goma na woi. To kada kamano o kakodo wiye anya kope ne ma podo tuona tuona. Donga wiye go e one one tie one one kore. Gini podwa kore e to juo kogenga be anigo to juo kogenga wachona ni 2027 podu bone no mana wodo dinga moro kama di lido Kenya ka ero kama no unja sai mudo di. Thank you. Uh, so. Uh, Thank you, thank you, Nyakamami. Um, so there's uh, ta ta Tabu. Uh, tabu, uh, ta tabu, can you just get up and wave to the people? Just wave to the people. Uh, tabu Osewe, 
whose MCA in Kusia County and is the wife to the letter Osewe. I don't know where Quino is. You have already met uh, everybody else. Uh, so let me just uh, say a few words. I'm sure when I'm invited here, you don't want to hear about Jaramogi being a great politician, being a statesman, being a champion for the oppressed and all of that, because everybody has talked about that. I'm sure you all want to know his other, his other life, isn't it? You, also, you all want to know how he related to his uh, family and especially the girls. And a lot of times when uh, people, oh please, now to, why is everybody talking? Am I boring? Why are you all talking when I'm talking, surely? It's only a few minutes, just listen. Uh, so in church, the people have always, Oburu and Raila have always explained how they were baptized uh, using African names. And uh, that Mze was against African, I mean European names. He was, and a lot of people mistake. They are saying that uh, Jeramogi hated European culture. That's not true. Jaramogi loved European culture, he loved Indian and other Eastern cultures, and other cultures. He just did not like people copying other people's culture when it is not yours. Yeah, so that's what he did not like. And a lot of people have all these myths about him. When I was in school, people would come to ask me that, oh, we hear your father turns into foam, he turns into a fly, he turns into this. And then you get surprised because I was living with him in the same house and I never saw any of those things. Did you, any of you ever hear those stories about him turning into foam and I don't know what, uh, like soaps, uh, foam and subs and all that. Yeah, or, or, uh, or uh, in that... Uh, and carrying a duda bie and all of that. So let me tell you, I want to say something about, I want to say something on, about uh, names. So uh, there's a book which I'm writing and I've written something about uh, names. People don't know that the rest of us also had a struggle with names. Uh, and because most of us were jealous when we had people are called nice names like John, George, uh, Elizabeth, Mary, and, uh, you know, you, you are called, uh, you don't have any of those names. So one time I, t I told with the idea of uh, Jennifer, and then I dropped it. <laughs> so uh, it, it never stuck. And uh, all of us, except for Raila, all of us at one time or another, we took on some uh, European names, but we were too shy to let our parents know. So Oburu, I don't know whether they'll forgive me, but Oburu, when he was in Pehil, he was called John Dennis. He went... <laughs> He, wa he wanted, he wanted to, uh, to impress his friends. Yeah? He wanted to impress his friends, even, I think even girls, especially girls. So Agola was called uh, Barak Buka. Uh, and then my sister Beryl was called Jane Alice when she was in Nyakach Girls. But later her, she went to uh, St. Francis in Mangu and she changed religion. She became... Uh, she became uh, a Catholic, and then got baptized as Beryl. So that's her real name. And the Abbot did not need to take on any name because she was named after Ruth first. Yeah, so that is her, her name. So then later on, uh, the, these three people were baptized, Raila, Oburu, and my father. The Legio Maria people came and baptized them. My father was called Nicodemo Ginga. And then, and uh, Raila was called Joshua. Raila. <laughs> And Obu, Oburu was called uh, Caleb. So mine was the most dramatic because when I was going to Kenya High School, uh, Mrs. Uh, the Caroline, Caroline Okelo Dongo, I was, she was an African American, but she was also my father's uh, PA. And she took me shopping. So when we went back to the house, at that time, it was called Cabernet Gardens. No, it was called Archer Gardens, the present day Cabernet Gardens. So he looked at the list of the school and he said, I don't want these names. When you take her to school, can you cross these names? And he took a piece of paper and said, her real names are Wenwa, Opo Asawe, Opo Ondo, Oginga. Can you imagine? So I, I, I didn't think he was serious. Then I go to Kenya High School, and when we finished at the principal's, the principal's office, she took out that piece of paper and said, I want to change her name. And so my name was quickly removed because I didn't tell you that the name I was using was different. Before I went to Maseno Girls, 
I, I called Raila Nuburu and asked them, what name should I take? And then they quickly had a meeting and said the name Roslyn. And I've never had such a sweet name. Uh, it was so sophisticated, so nice. So I changed everything. I was called Rosalie Nakini. In Maseno, everybody there knew me as Rosalie Nakini. So even when I went to Kenya High School, my, my admission papers had the name Rosalie Akini. Then my father uh, went and changed. It was being, I mean, my name was changed. So can you imagine? Kenya High School at that time was really, uh, what do you call it? It was a typical colonial school. You know, there are all these school rules, there are uh, table manners, uh, respect your elders, uh, uh, you know, the, the pudding, you know, with custard and trickle tarts and I don't know what, jam tarts. And you can imagine that's, and that environment is where I went with a name like Wenwa Opondo Akini Oginga. <sighs> It was, I have never been so embarrassed. And the, and the class teacher, whenever she was reading the register in the morning, she, when she reached my name, she would start. Wenwa, Asewe, Opondo, and then she would pause. Yeah? And then continue so that everybody started laughing. You can't imagine what I went through. And all my friends were having nice names, Agnes, Gladys, uh, Jane, uh, you, know, uh, you know, sweet, sweet names. So later, much later, I managed to drop some of the names. So I stayed with Wenwa, Akini, Odinga, you know, much later, I managed on my own way to. So we also had our own struggles, but he did not mean that he hated English names or English culture. It was just not our culture, full stop. So uh, what I, want, I want to stop there. I'm writing a book. Some of these things are in that book. So later on, you will be able to read, if at all it is ever published. Yeah, uh, so, but my mother died almost 10 years ago. Uh, that is in November, tw November 1984. Ten, almost 10 years before. So she's going to be uh, uh, 10 years in November this year. They met at a sports ground called Miguena in Sakwa, a traditional sports ground for Luos from all over Nyanza. And she was a, a pretty girl, and she was uh, outrunning all the other girls, and he fell in love with her. And later on, he managed to get her. So I just want to request that, please, our political leadership, can you people do something about Miguena? Can you uh, develop Miguena yeah, to bring it up, maybe into a modern stadium, or, uh, you know, a uh, uh, cultural stadium. And that's all I want to ask. And thank you. Yeah, thank you. Now, on behalf of uh, the in-laws, the daughters-in-laws of Jaramogi, I want to invite uh, Minpin, Dr. Aida Odinga, to come and... Uh, say a few words. So Aida Karibu Min Pin. Hello? Hello? Are you happy? I'm also very happy. Uh, all protocols observed and did you do chen kuna neno who can afford you today is a very special day because I've been requested to say something about my father in law. Thirty years ago, by the time my father in law was passing on, he had four uh, daughters-in-law led by, we were led by Dr. Anoburu is on here Dr. Anoburu unfortunately Anne is not here there was Margaret Agola Margaret is gone, she's deceased she's no longer there and then there was uh, Tabu Osewe who is here 
Tabu is a MCA, elected MCA in Bondo, Sakwa West. And the fourth one is me. So today, today, this mantle has fallen on me to talk on behalf of Jeramogi. Now, when I got married in that home, that is about 50 years ago, when I got married in that home 50 years ago, let me say, when I first met Jaramogi, I was so scared because I didn't know I was going to meet such a great man. My boyfriend then, My boyfriend then, Railodinga, cheated me that he was taking me for a ride from Kisumu. Nitabwe. <laughs> Nitabwe. Then he took me for a ride and we went on, on passing some villages and some bushes. Eventually, we arrived in a home that looks really good. The home was well organized. And I asked him, where is this? Then he told me, this is my home. I was so shocked. I said, why didn't you tell me that you are coming to your home? Because I would have prepared myself mentally and even dress-wise, I would have prepared myself. Then I was not dressed like this. But then, when we got there, the next thing he told me, come and meet my father. Who are you? To meet the great Jaramogi Ogingo Dinga, I was damn scared. I almost fainted, but I didn't. So I met the old man for the first time. He was such a nice person. He talked nicely. And in the end, he gave me, was it 200 shillings? That was a long time ago. And he said, go buy soda on your way. That was Jaramogi. I think from that day, he made very quick arrangements for me to get married. And that's why I'm here, standing here today. <laughs> Jaramogi, as a father-in-law, was a very, very kind person to all of us daughters-in-law. He used to talk to us nicely. During Christmas, he used to give us gifts. I remember one time, he gave me perfume. I think he, I don't know what he gave Anna. By that time, uh, Tabu was not there. He stood by us when things were difficult and when things were good. We used to celebrate a lot in his presence. But I'll talk about myself. During the time in the late 80, in the early 80s, when Raila was arrested and eventually charged with treason and was thrown there in committee. I went to Jaramogi and I said, you know what? Do you know he's been charged with treason? And I've read what the constitution says and says the only verdict is death. He laughed and told me, don't worry. Those things will not happen. I don't know whether he believed it or he was just trying to encourage me to know that things were okay. That was Jaramogi. He would always encourage me and encourage all of us. There was also that soon after that, he was put under house arrest here in Kisumu. But for the first three months, I was allowed to go and see him in Kisumu. Later on, I was barred from even walking on Taifa Road. Taifa Road is that road where his house is. I was told, I was written, I was given a letter that restricted me from either walking on Taifa Road or driving along Taifa Road or being anywhere near Milimani. Those were the rules those days. Anybody could make a rule and that rule stood. So I was not able to see him. But later on, 
After that, I lost my job. The first sacking, or the first retirement, 1988. Later on, he told me, don't worry about those people. You know, there are many ways that people can live. You don't only have to be employed to live. There are many things you can do. And he started training me on how to do other things. He started training me on how to manage people and how to manage uh, some businesses. And I still do that up to today. My greatest teacher that modeled me was Mzee Jaramogi Oginga Udinga. I know most of you ask, why weren't you modeled by your father? My father died when I was about seven years old. So I grew up without a father. I didn't know what the responsibilities of fathers in the homes. I thought my mother was everything and actually she was everything. But I didn't know that there could be a father. When I met Jeremogi and I became one of the daughters-in-law, he loved me dearly. And I used to say, so this is how those people with fathers feel. I found a father, a real father in Jaramogi. And um, his passing actually still hurts us up to today. In my speeches, where I work, whatever I do, I always refer to him that Jaramogi would not do it like this. Or when somebody confronts me with problems, I said, what would Jaramogi say? What would Jaramogi do? He was a great teacher. He was a great father-in-law. He was a great friend. And with those few remarks, we thank God and we wish, we pray to God to rest his soul in eternal peace. Thank you. Thank you very much, Min Peng. She has the record of being the lady who was retired in quotes in public interest twice for being associated with the Jaromogi Odinga family. That was the only crime for her being retired twice in public interest. Now we will go to a documentary on Jaramogi's political life. So if you can bring that documentary, because Jaramogi rose from the village and became a child of the world. There we are. Jaramogi Ajuma Oginga Odinga is a political giant who straddled Kenya's political landscape like a colossus, both in life and in death. A nationalist and statesman who remains as the greatest of them in the political arena, who stands tall as the great patriot Kenya has ever had and a doyen of opposition politics betrayed at both of Kenya's momentous political turning points. was a teacher by profession, come businessman and politician, is best remembered as a selfless political leader who sacrificed his personal glory for the sake of the country. When he declined the golden offer that was placed in his hands to become Kenya's founding president and instead demanded for the release of Jomo Kenyatta, who was in incarceration, to come and lead. This is said to have shocked many, portraying him as a rare breed of politician. We cannot in any sense be more advanced than our teacher and master, whom I think is much more advanced in political outlook in this country than we are. We are still in just in the stages of learning politics from him. Oginga Odinga plunged in the world of Maki politics in 1947, becoming a member of the leading lights in Kenya's independence struggle. And when full independence dawned, his efforts and loyalty to the cause 
were rewarded when Mzee Jomo Kenyatta became president. Jaramogi became Kenya's first vice president. However, the two practiced different political ideologies and it was only a matter of time. In 1966, two years after independence, Kenya's founding vice president Oginga resigned from his position because his principles were in sharp conflict with government policies at the time, which he felt were drifting far away from democracy, which was a grand betrayal to the independence dream. Hence, his autobiography, Not Yet Uhuru. The Yomo tended to steer away from what they had promised the citizenry. For instance, the land. The land was actually the big uh, factor in this agreement between Jaramogi and uh, Mze. Because Jaramogi and the other guys like Bill Alkagia, for instance, plus a guy by the name J.D. Kala, all these are dead. They, are, they were very strong uh, supporters of land being distributed to the citizen. Inyata called Jaramogi, and Jaramogi went to Gatun. It was about evening. Kenyatta took Jaramogi, told him, follow me. Kenyatta was in his car, Jaramogi was in his car. But ele mali, mali nyingi hapa kwa dhika. Samba ya msungi likuwa kubo na minai na minai. So Kenyatta told Jaramogi, Jaramogi, we have fought for this country. And we must share things. On the far left, ima samba na ngome kubwa kubwa, takuwa yako. Mimi ita chuko pandeo. And the Ramoni said no. The Rubicon had been crossed and political battle lines drawn. Jaramogi and his big team of associates formed a new party, Kenya People's Union, KPU, which the government could not tolerate and was prosecuted. A situation was by the infamous 25th October 1969 Kisumu massacre. The relationship between Kenyatta and Jaramogi was beyond repair, but Oginga Odinga stuck to his political principles of championing for democracy despite being put under house arrest. The two were never to meet again until 1978 August when President Kenyatta died. In his true democratic traits, Oginga went to State House Nairobi to mourn his one-time bosom friend, and he did so with respect as per his Luo culture when mourning heroes. Many years later, the sons of founding fathers closed ranks between the two families. None of us is going anywhere. Those who win and those who lose, we must all at the end of the day join hands and work together for our country. I remember on the, that day when Mzee passed on, Jeremogi went to State House and he was carrying the flag of his He then went and invoked a very, very passionate judge uh, in Luo. That is very deep. That was a statement of the friendship that had been. Exit Kenyatta, enter Moi and the doyen of opposition politics was not relenting. He joined forces with other political heavyweights, civil society groups, lawyers, the church, church university, university lecturers and students in agitating for return of multi-party politics in the 80s. This remains as the darkest period in Kenya since independence. The period that was punctuated with the detentions without trial and murders in prisons. The darkest face whose mourning came in 1991 when Section 2A of the Constitution was repealed, 
opening doors for current multi-party democracy after years of shedding blood and sweat in trenches Kenya's second liberation had been delivered many paid the ultimate price some like Charles Rubia lost their voice while in detention Kenneth Matiba suffered a stroke that he never recovered from while for Jaramogi his son Raila Amolo Odinga was detained without trial for nine years and could not be allowed to attend the burial of his mother while the likes of James Orengo went into exile and Koigwa Mwere holding the record of the longest serving political detainee of 13 years they tell you you know that you'll uta uta mm. some you know can you on your you know your feet and very tender places particular kisigino this part which we call maleolas it's very painful and this part of you know you are very very painful you cry mm. and so you cry until then you find you cannot cry mm. that you will talk you will talk you've been pretending that your jaramogo gingo dingas uh, personal physician that is not the only work you are doing you are involved in clandestine organizations to overthrow the government i say no i don't know about all these things don't you know more kenya i say no i don't if you don't know you tell us you will know Mm. Likely after that beating, you see, they dressed me up because you cry until you cannot cry. Because you, you are beaten but you don't feel the pain. On 2nd August 1991, the team comprising of Jaramogi Oginga Odinga, Philip Gashoka, Ahmed Bamariz, Salim Damwe, Masinde Muliro and George Nthenge formed the first opposition party in Kenya. But Kanu regime had outlawed the outfit. The six led by Jaramogi had a supporting cast of young tucks that included Gitobu Imanyara, Muhisa Kitui, Raila Odinga, Paul Mwite, Anyang Nyongo, Joe Ager, as well as progressive lawyers that included John Haminwa, Gibson Kamaukuria, among others. Eventually, the liberation struggle paid off. Tukitaka kuimarisha chama cha Khan kijulikane kama ni chama safi ina kinajotingatia yale yote mambo mema na mazuri lazima tuangalie kwamba tunasafisha na kusafisha sio kusema kusafisha na kuna fault ndani yake kitu mimi nauliza nyinyi leo ili tuone hawa walio katika siasa wale walio watumishi wa serikali sisi tuseme kwamba tufungue tuondoe ile section ya katiba ya Kenya ya 2A upon sensing defeat from the gathering storm politically an internal power struggle over leadership of Ford was engineered by Kanu with opposition luminaries falling into the trap and in August 1992 the giant Ford split into two Ford Asili that was led by Kenneth Matiba and Ford Kenya that was led by Jaramogi Oginga Odinga all the efforts of years of a bitter struggle went down the drain Ford was Matiba and Jaramogi disagreed I was in Ford myself because I came from retention earlier than Matiba. I was a, a position in Ford. I was a fundraiser and I raised a lot of money for Ford at Jaramogi then. Uh, but when Matiba came out, Matiba refused to accept Raira uh, Odinga as the only Ford candidate for presidency. It is a Jaramogi Odinga faction of Ford 
that had a vision for Kenya. Jeremogi Oginga Odinga represented uh, the, not the Marxist, because uh, Jeremogi was never a Marxist, but a people's uh, approach to development. And uh, it was natural given my participation in uh, university politics and uh, uh, my time at the Nairobi Law Monthly that I would identify with Jaramogi. What were the reasons that Matiba felt it can't be Jaramogi? Matiba was very, very, very truthfully speaking, just stubborn. The issue of ethnicity uh, reared its head, which wasn't there when we were fighting for the second liberation and which we knew retired President Moi had used very effectively to hold on to power. Moi Kibaki, who never participated in the Second Liberation, soon as Section 2A was repealed, he forgot about the Mugumo tree and the razor blade and formed his own party. Okay? Then, my dear friend Matiba, who we had agreed, let's leave it to Jaramogi because of his contribution. Serious students of that period of Kenyan history will definitely see the government hand. That was the only way that Kano was going to come back and uh, they zoned the country into areas uh, along which they would vote. One of the enduring regrets is that as soon as Section 2A was repealed, the ethnic um, rivalry reared its head. So, the dreams, the aspirations of the people uh, die. Uh, the, of the founding generation, uh, the very few led by Jaramogi remained true to that calling. Yes, I felt pained that the principled stand we had taken was now overrun. Once again, the country's greatest patriot was betrayed by the people. They had fought together for another phase of liberation. Down but not out, the doyen of opposition politics contested presidency in December 1992 general election. Obadia Adonija Jaramogi Ajuma Oginga Odinga had shot for the moon but missed the political jackpot and landed among the stars, becoming Kenya's first official opposition leader. But as fate would have it, on 20th January 1994, the 83-year-old veteran politician took his final bow, signing out of Kenya's political scene with the third and thunder. They had been elected Odinga, being member of parliament, for the popular city constituency Langata, while Jaramogi was representing his son, Dr. Oburu Oginga. Thirty years later, Raila Odinga, who became Kenya's second prime minister, is Dr. Oburu is the senator for Siaya County. Their sister Ruth Adhiambo is Kisumu County Woman Representative, while granddaughter Winnie Odinga is Member of Parliament in the East African Legislative Assembly. Jaramogi might be long gone, but his political shadow is still large in Kenyan politics, even in death. A doyen who reigned but never ruled, a man who put the country's interest first at his own expense.
interest first at his own expense. October 1911, unnamed Obadiah Adonija in the Anglican Church, a name he later was a businessman who sacrificed his personal glory for the sake of the country. To become Kenya's founding president and instead of Jomo Kenyatta who was in incarceration. This is said we cannot in any sense teacher and master whom I think is much more this country than we are. Politics in 1947 becoming as independence struggle loyalty to the cause He became Kenya's first vice president. However, a matter of time. In 1966, two years founding vice president was in sharp conflict with government policy were drifting far. dream, hence his autobiography, Not Yet Uhuru. Yomo tended to steer away from what they had promised, the citizenry. For instance, the land. The land was actually the big uh, factor in this agreement between Jaramogi and uh, Mze, because Jaramogi and the other guys like Bill Kagia, for instance, Plus, a guy by the name J.D. Kala, all these are dead. Uh, they were very strong uh, supporters of land being distributed to the citizenry. Kenyatta called Jaramogi, and Jaramogi went to Gatun. It was about evening. Kenyatta took Jaramogi, told him to follow me. Kenyatta was in his car, Jaramogi was in his car. But, uh, ile mali mali nyingi hapa kuandika eh samba ya msungi ilikuwa kubwa na mnai na mnai and we must share things on the far left e masamba na ume kita chu and there among the city lines drawn Kenya People's Union KPU which the government could not tolerate 
and was proscribed in 1969, a situation that had been made worse by the infamous 25th October 1969 Kisumu massacre. The relationship between Kenyatta and Jaramogi was beyond repair, but Oginga Odinga stuck to his political principles of championing who August it's Oginga went to State House Nairobi to mourn his one-time bosom friend, and he did so with respect as per his Luo culture when mourning heroes. There's closed ranks between the two families. None of us is going anywhere. Those who win and those who lose, we must all at the end of the day join hands and work together for our country. I remember on the, that day when Mzee passed on, wearing the flag whisk. He then went and invoked a very, very passionate uh, judge in Luo. Nata, enter Moi, and the dog. He joined forces with other political heavyweights, civil society groups, lawyers, and of multi-party politics in the 80s. This remains as the darkest period in Kenya since independence without trial and murders in came in 1991 when Section 2A of the Constitution was repealed. Democracy liberation had been delivered. Many paid the ultimate price. Some like Charles Rubia lost their voice while in detention. Kenneth Matiba suffered, suffered a stroke that he never recovered from. A trial for while the likes of James Orengo went into exile and Koigua Mwere, holding the record of the longest serving political They tell you, you know, that you will uta, uta mm. Some, you know, kin you on your, you know, your feet and very tender places, particularly Kisigino, this part which we call Maleolas. It's very painful. And this part of, you know, you are very, very painful. You cry, and so you cry until then you find you cannot cry. Mm. That you will talk. You will talk. You've been pretending that your Jaramogo Gingo Dinga's uh, personal physician, that is not the only work you are doing. Don't you know more Kenya? I say, no, I don't. Hmm. If you don't know, you tell us, you will know. Hmm. Likely after that meeting, you see, they dressed me up because you cry. You are beaten. August 1991, the team comprising of Jaramogi Oginga Odinga, Philip Gashoka, Ahmed Bamariz, Salim Ndamwe, Masinde Muliro, and George Nthenge formed the first opposition party in Kenya, but Kanu regime had outlawed the outfit. The six
Так. Paul Mwite, Anyang Nyongo, Joe Aguirre, as well as progressive lawyers that included John Haminwa, Gibson Kamauku, of Tukitaka ku imarisha chama cha kan kichule Safi ina kinajo singatia Lazima tuangalie kwamba tunasafisha na kusafisha na kuna Ford ndani yake kitu mina ili tuone hawa walio katika siasa wale walio watumishi wa serikali sisi tuseme kwamba katiba ya Kenya ya 2A upon sensing defeat from the gathering storm politically an internal power struggle over leadership of Ford was engineered by Kanu with opposition luminaries falling into the trap and in August 1992 the giant Ford split into two Ford Asili that was led by Kenneth Matiba and Ford Kenya that was led by Jaramogi Oginga Odinga all the efforts of years of a bitter struggle went Paul Matiba and Jaramogi disagreed. Because I came from retreation earlier than Matiba, I was a, a position in Ford. I was a fundraiser. And I raised a lot of money for Ford. Uh, but when Matiba came out, Matiba refused to accept Raira uh, Odinga as the only Ford candidate for presidency. It is a Jaramogi Ginga Odinga faction. Represented uh, the but the people's uh, approach to development and it was natural given my participation in uh, university politics and uh, uh, my time at the Nairobi Law Man. I felt truthfully speaking it's just stubborn. The issue of the necessity which wasn't there when we were fighting. Retire. Jana mungu kurano dungi na ndatu wa teri mundi thi mozi ya pop Uganda. Obote wuthu wakinga taane bafiki yato neuka mozo pop. Jana mungu no mozo pop kanti. Higa moro mungu kabiwa chonu. Jana mungu miya mozo nyerele kubote kabuti jumbe. Mathothu katok jino mozo jogo. Joma miya mozo mozo jogo kubuka ten moloi. Omia wacho dunga milungo no kingo dinga. Jara mungu keo guwajari alot kibu. Tokata kamano. Dini ipoko tho. Dakuwa jara mungu ni mea tho ni kunchele. Iti tho ki kwa chelo. Ke jara mungu ni wa ewe lagi yara mabobu. Aruwako ute. Arwa kuke ni mocho bote. Yolwo mo a Kampala. Yolwo mo a Tanzania. Yolwo mo a Zambia. Nyaka chat kada Cameroon.
Yoluwari urembe gimba la chia nike jimu wadu 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 kwa yuru tu wadu yu ude iga mati ya rio gabiri yo Yoka nyan mlonga uye Donga uye Kao kuluo banga mlonga uye lego tula Luba nga ila tuze yu dogino Higa makoro ane kerni Nyoja leko jara mungi juwa mokadi Konyi za niluka Tonyi Israel ane mondo luyone te Mondo wakadi yonu wande kocha Jara mungi ni haila di bedo president Mari nga matidu Kwa uduto kanyalbo ugiweche Tadu wa somu nweweche Maka tawaji ungema Lomo ni ambe na university Majara mugi Jara mugi mupu njagi mangenye matune na tawala Gepe nikali Kode roja sungu no biro kibuon mare Tojara mogi okona ni uwefiki uwefiki uda ero ni eri mondo yudiki modu wano Na uwefiki 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 yako ni magi Omi yadu wakote kata nyako ni ero kamano Nenya wangadhi yadhi ya njimi Tomoloyo Uganda li Kateko kiku kati nde juwe remo Uganda Akwa yoganda luo mondo bedi ya utachie Ebatha kola cha mkoni Ana ino siye mga machu Badakoni ana ino mama jail mbogo Jail mbogo Kolo bati mwadu wako kwenge Donge ne umo adukoro Jokanya na mne umo Akoro ero kama no uru Asa elando nu Ana ino familia Majo wa Kenyata Kapot kamilu ngu nika tutu poten Jara mugi note ramina chieme dalano Korojo wa Kenyata banka Kwa unewujo wa Kenyata mosgi mama ngeida Banya seo kwezi na u Maribiro iru wa This is a historic day Celebrating the life of a hero A nationalist a man whose life impacted and changed not only the history of Kenya, but Africa and, of course, the whole world. Certain silent features on Jaramogi's life as his biography can fail books and books. I knew Jaramogo Kimbo Dinga in 1958 at a tender age as his youth. He was a simple and truthful person. What I loved the family and the nation of Kenya for which he spent his struggle for independence and later for justice. Truth and the rule of law, happiness, and even his life. So, Kenya. And him, the vice president, with independence. But as his and him to think of an alternative rule from an opposition. was never the with his allies. He would walk and along with
Ogi, the nationalist, supported a across taking several students to Europe and America. In health, institutions in care. Yaramogi's hand and legacy settlement scheme across the country where he narrates his entire life to Rubath Shoshi leadership may I thank the and lower community great after life thank you you thank you thank you very much as being brought i want i know you have been with us john kamau in toronto Professor Masson, also in the United States of America, we really appreciate that you have been online all this time, but we are running. We shall come to you. Ladies and gentlemen, the honor. was a close starting with Bahati that later became known as Makadara he's now 99 years old you'd think a 30 year old is picking are all this picking. Thank you. Can we play some? Please let's be silent so that we please, please. Yeah. Ya mtu amba Yetu katika historia ya Kenya
inaingia simameni mara kutoka injili ya ukombozi alisimama imara na ninafurahi na shukuru amewacha vijana wake wawili ambao wanasimama kwa njia hiyo moyo rafiki yangu sana na mimi umwambia siku zote asive moyo wakati mwingine alikuwa niliota endelea ninazidi kutembea ma unipa ndi she ewe bwana uninue kwa imani nisimame nipande mi lima yo unipa ndi she atapanda Raila atapanda. Kitu tunachohitaji ni kusimama imara nyuma yake. Wale wenye kupeleka matumbo mbele tuwaache lakini tuombe wapate kutubu. Hata Zakayo alikuwa juu ya mti. Na Kristo alipofika pale akamwambia Zakayo na kuona, teremka leo wokovu umefika kwako. Tunataka hata Zakayo ateremke kutoka kule ajue kwamba nchi inakwenda mbele watu wa Kenya watu wa Kenya tusishangae tukione yanayotendeka tunaona yanayotendeka hiyo funzo kwetu kwamba katika mwendo huu katika safari hii ya kwenda katika maendeleo ya kwenda katika amani ya kwenda katika furaha ya kwenda katika ufanishi sifa ni safari ndefu si safari eh, rais ni safari ngumu na inahitaji watu kama wana Raila ambao wanasimama imara ambao wanasimama juu ya kweli baada ya mateso baada ya vitisho ba, hata kuambiwa atapelekwa mbinguni hakutishika bado anawaambia watu wa Kenya kujeni twende mbele tuungane pamoja tupige vita tupige safari mpaka tulete ukombozi tena nyinyi kila mmoja wetu kila mmoja wetu anao wajibu wa kusimama ukaendesha neno hili kuendesha injili hii na mimi binafsi nimeota nikaona Raila anasema oh, mimi ni bibi yato hii naona nimpe mtu mwingine Naona katika Kenya hakuna mtu bado anatosha viatu vya Raila. Katika Kenya nimeangalia na mimi nimeambiwa mimi ni miaka tisaina tisa. Kwa hivyo nimeona mengi, nimeona viongozi wengi. Nimeona wengine wakija waki, wakianguka. Wengine wakia wakipeleka tumbo mbele, wanasema nawakilisha watu na tumbo yake ndio na anawakilisha lazima tukatae hawa lazima tuwakatae tuambie safari yenu imefika mwisho safari tunayoanza ni safari mpya ya kuelekea katika ufanisi katika maendeleo katika amani katika furaha mhubiri alipokuwa akihubiri katika injili kanisani nilisikia maneno yake sana na mimi naamini kwamba jaramogi mahali alipo wakati huu anaangalia kutoka juu akiangalia wana wa Kenya jinsi wanavyoteseka jinsi wanavyotabika jinsi wanavyoshangaika anaona jaramogi akisema wana wa Kenya simameni imara kama mimi nilivyosimama imara asema wana wa Kenya fueni bidii simameni imara vuweni viatu twende hata kama ni miba tukanyage miba tuelekee safari ya ukombozi Mungu awabariki kila mmoja wetu. Asante, asante sana Mzeomido. Now we want to go to the keynote address we shall be delivered by three eminent persons and I want them to come to the podium.
Professor Nyang Nyongo, Professor Michael Chege, and Dr. Olara Otunu. As they come, there is a tribute by Ambassador Patrick Hayford, who was Ghana's High Commissioner to South Africa in the last two years of Pre President Mandela's leadership, after which he became the Director for Africa in the Executive Office of United Nations Secretary General Kofi Annan. He says that Jaramogi Ogingo Dinga was a true African statesman and patriot, a giant of the anti-colonial struggle and one of the founding fathers of modern Kenya. Today we commemorate and celebrate his courageous, steadfast commitment to upholding and preserving the essence of our identity, culture, and value as Africans. Everywhere he went, he made a lasting impact. Such was the sheer force of his personality. Ogingo Dinga spoke boldly and loudly for Africa, locally, regionally, and internationally becoming a powerful advocate for the freedom and dignity of the black man. We will always remember and commemorate his immeasurable contribution and his extraordinary legacy. May his great soul rest in perfect peace. Signed, Ambassador Patrick Hayford. Ladies and gentlemen, we have now reached the stage in which we are going to have our keynote address in a unique way and before us here we have three great Africans. The first to speak will be Professor Anyang Nyongo who from the moment he's here now will remove his governor's hat and will wear his academic hat He's not only been my mentor at the university in the Department of Political Science, but he's written a lot on politics and political economy, but he's also become a practitioner. And during the four days, he was the executive director of Ford and later Ford Kenya. And he was also one of the advisors of Jaramogi Odinga before he became a member of parliament and later became the senator of Kisumu and finally governor of Kisumu. Professor, I think you will start and then I will introduce Michael or you want me to introduce all of you? Okay, the second speaker will be Professor Michael Chege. Professor Michael Chege and Professor Nyang Nyongo are like Siamese twins. They teach political economy, and during the heydays of the 1980s, when there used to be public lectures in the University of Nairobi's Taifa Hall, Professor Nyong and Professor Michael Chege were regular speakers. They've also been together when Professor Nyang Nyongo was the Minister for Economic Planning. Professor Michael Chege was his advisor. So you can talk of two gentlemen who are a loaded combination. Joining them is again one who combines very well with them. And uh, Dr. Olaro Tunu with Professor Nyongo go way back to Makerere. He became the foreign minister and has been a diplomat of the Uganda government. He comes from the community of the wider Luo in Uganda. And Dr. Lara Tunu can give you the credentials of Jaramogi as a Pan-Africanist because he has a living memory of what Jaramogi was doing for the greater African nation. Now that I've introduced them, I would come in and they have a modus operandi in which they'll keep on handing the relay button. Professor Nyongo, you are first on the floor. Thank you very much, uh, my friend Adam, Prof. 
Thank you very much, the family Jaramogi, who arranged these things today, inspired it, and all those who have come. Less than five years into flag independence, the Dwayne of Social Democracy, Jaramogi Oginga Odinga, penned his autobiography, Not Yet Uhuru. Matters have since gotten to worse. The masses in Kenya can hardly breathe. Across our land and nation, disrespect for human dignity reigns. There are families surviving on one meal per day. Healthcare for all remains a distant dream. Many, many parents cannot afford school fees. Place their homes on, on their homes on charity. Kenya is now rated one of the most unequal societies globally. With an annual rate of growth, that provides little hope that our nation will provide a place to feel at home for all our people. Just before independence, Yaramogi told the Nyapara of colonial rule, and I quote, Kenya is Marwa which means Kenya is ours. Perhaps he spoke too early. For it didn't take long before Fanon's wretched of the earth foresight on the pitfalls of independence without a truly progressive and nationalist ruling class was demonstrated as from one country to the other in Africa through military coups. The new and productive African ruling class who are only interested in the power and the benefits of power have continued to enrich themselves and not look after the plight of the poor which is the major cause of state failure today one of the things that Yaramogi was committed to liberate Africans from a generation has found itself landless and homeless even 60 years after independence. Many still live as quarters in overcrowded former Mau Mau villages and informal settlements in Kenya. Jaramogi was earnest when he wrote his book, Not Yet Uhuru, boldly stating that, and I quote, the struggle for independence is not just about freedom from colonialism, it's also about the struggle for economic, social, and political justice for all. He was categorical that the struggle for independence, I quote, was about improving the lives of all Kenyans. As long as there are downtrodden people in the nation of Kenya, the struggle for liberation in Kenya, as elsewhere in Africa, remains urgent and an imperative. That struggle is still urgent and imperative even today. Vice President Jaramogi Ogingodinga witnessed it all. The scramble for post-colonial or colonial assets, the rapid transfer of public property to private hands, and the rise of an authoritarian presidential state. He saw individuals and some former nationalists troop to the seat of power in pursuit of special interests. He saw first had the seeds of present day major graft planted and the disdain for the citizen displayed among the ruling class. This was not the Kenya Jaramogi had dreamt of. Certainly not. Without shame or sense of guilt, this class accumulated land at an alarming speed, driving poor peasants out of their ancestral homes when it suited them. Jaramogi faced without constant intrigues. Jaramogi faced constant intrigues in the ruling party can to isolate all progressive forces decided to finally resign from the government to form the Kenya People's Union in 1966. Jaramogi Ogingo Dinga was detained without trial as you have heard and the government mounted a witch hunt against all progressive forces. 
Jaramogi remained unbogable and continued the struggle for multi-party democracy, dignity and social justice up to his last breath. Exactly 30 years ago today, we fondly remember Jaramogi as steadfast, modest, honest, consistent, a diligent farmer, teacher, mentor, a pan-Africanist, nationalist, a realist who was honest in his advocacy for the liberation of the wretched of the earth in Kenya and elsewhere in the world. Koigi Wamwere got it right. He said Jaramogi Ogingo Odinga was one of the few politicians whose politics was driven by ideology than personal whims and by a vision that would have been a compass by which he would have led the ship of state had he been president of this country, unquote. To the disbelief of many, Jaramogi hung Kenyatta's portrait on the wall of his Kisumu home, together with portraits of great freedom fighters like Nyerere, Nkrumah, and Gabel Abdel Nasser of Egypt. When asked why he would give Kenyatta this honor, he said, and I quote, he had no power to revise history and deny that Kenyatta fought and suffered for the freedom of Kenya. His honesty and respect for history was engraved on his walls, notwithstanding his differences with Jobo Kenyatta. Those of us who led the second liberation struggle have walked in the footsteps of Jaramogi, consistently working with his son Raila Molo Dinga. Jaramogi lives on in the basic structure of our struggle. The Constitution respects and honors, and I quote, those who heroically struggle to bring freedom and justice to our land, unquote. Jaramogi's name and footprint is in it and remains indelible. Devolution, the as enshrined in the 2010 Constitution, is a fruit of the Second Liberation. The preamble recognizes the aspirations of all Kenyans for a government based on the essential values of human rights, equality, freedom, democracy, social justice, and the rule of law. Values that Jaramogi, a spouse in his life, struggled for and suffered for. And, as I have written elsewhere, that the annals of history in the genesis and evolution of modern nations only has a few visionary leaders who shaped the destiny of such nations at critical moments in history. In the case of Kenya, Jaramogi Ogingo Odinga will always stand tall among the nationalists who shaped the destiny of our nation. 30 years on, it's still a long walk to freedom, but we shall get there. Long live Jaramogi Ogingo Odinga, Long live his vision and inspiration. Long live his words and advice. Noti to Huru, Aluta Continua. I will now hand it over to my colleague and comrade, Professor Michael Chege, with whom I have worked very closely since the 1960s, not just in academy, but in politics as well. Michael. Thanks very much. to the Ogigo Niga family for accepting, for being generous and allowing us to come anniversary of an, a great African, a great statesman, Jeremogi Ogigo Niga. Yes, Prime Minister Ayala Moringa, again, always a pleasure to be with you and your family. Let me say this before I go far. I don't want to repeat what everybody has said about the greatness of this man. I want to say something about greater things we have done which are not yet in the public domain and which is people like us who should be doing research and bringing them to you as a way of getting him known better and also getting our country to improve the way it does its business better. 
I was 12 years old in 1958 when Jaramogi stood in Parliament, Legislative Council, and said whatever the British thought about the 14 members who had been elected in the Legislative Council, the true leaders of the African people are the ones you locked up. Jomo Kenyatta, the Kapenguria Six, and the others. I can assure you from, my heart, from what I heard from the elders, because we are still in the village concentration camps, the earth shook. Nobody knew what was going to happen to him, whether he too was going to be locked up, or what was going to happen. But I can tell you, it was a moment that raised people's hearts. Today, I want to use this position in my own small way to give back to that moment of happiness which an awful lot of young children in those villages felt as a result of Jaramogi. Not yet Uhuru has been mentioned. Recently, two major biographies this past year were published not specifically about Jeromogi, but which mention him. I think if you can bring the, the two. Oh, here they are. One, it's about the life of uh, Martin Luther King. Martin Luther King, as you all know, was one of the greatest leaders of the last century. An African-American, he was there at Independence in Ghana in 57. He knew Jaramogi, he knew Tomboya, he knew this country. He followed each and every development that was going on. This is by far the most important book published so far. 680 pages, his big book, on the life of Martin Luther King. You may not know that Jaramogi, and I'll say this a little later, the instruments of a December 1964 as a representative of the president and the signatory of that document is Jaramogi. This appears here because it was important. Jaramogi travels to Atlanta to speak to the Student Nonviolent Coordination Conference. Jaramogi Oginga Odinga, Oginga Odinga. Martin Luther King was singing about this when he was talking about Mau Mau in Harlem. So you can see what here about not yet Uhuru is part of the story. Second book here is the book Death and the Mart the murder of Patrice Lumumba. Patrice Lumumba was a person whose life and whose ideas were dear to Jaramogi. He hung his picture in his bedroom, he started the Lumumba Institute, he liked Lumumba's idea. We have Lumumba a state near, near where he liked to live in his land. This book shows the way he was killed and thrown into an, into an acid tank of hydrochloric acid in Katanga. Important to Jeromogi's life. You will not believe. Martin Luther King The FBI of being a communist and of being in payroll of the communists. And that made his life hard. Patrice Lumumba was accused of being a Soviet spy. No. It's of the people of Africa in big ways, in different ways, in different parts of the world. The only way to make life difficult for them was to accuse them of Russia, of China. I feel this is an important 
for you to see where we stand. Second point, because I don't want to bore you, I'd like, to, if you'd like to join, 1964, when he's being accused of being unlucky of the communist, and a wedge is being drawn him between him and Jomo Kenyatta by the British intelligence, CIA, FBI, all those things you are reading in the papers, you see in a moment. If you can please put this video on. Of the accusations which were being made at the time. Please. Oh no. Please listen, because it is important to know about how somebody's political life in those days could be destroyed from outside. Please listen. He's been Jomo Kenyatta. He's been described as anti-Western and pro-communist, and I asked him what he had to say about this. Well, let me say that uh, uh, I think those who think of me like that are very wrong indeed. I only laugh at them because they are short-minded and they don't know what they're doing. What, why I appear to be pro-East is because the weight has been so heavily overweighted on the Western side because Kenya has been under British and the Americans influence here is also very strong and in order to be neutral I might appear as if I'm pulling the weight in order to balance it towards the East and anybody who sees me just uh, I'm pulling in order to bring the balance, they tend to think that I go east. But I am, uh, because I must pull towards east in order to bring about the balance. And immediately the balance come, I can only be proud to tell you that I'm an African nationalist who will always tour what I feel is right for the African people in Kenya and in Africa. Listen to I think that. it's also suggested, reported, that you have a private army and that you've been importing arms for this army. What's your comment on that? Well, I wish I had it. <laughs> but at the present moment, I'm very sorry that I haven't got it. Is it true that you have been sending your supporters for guerrilla training in Bulgaria and other communist countries? Well, not my supporters. We have been sending the people who are hungry, who are hung, thirsty for education from this country to go to all this country to search for education in any field, not one particular field. Is it your ambition to become president of Kenya? But uh, that is not for me to judge. Let it be that is it the wish of the people. If it is the wish of the people, that I should lead them in any direction, in any way, you let them. It will be their own judgment and so on, and not mine. Mr. Ding, there's been a lot of feeling in Britain about the deportation of Mr. Beeston of the Daily Telegraph. Can you tell us the reasons for his deportation? <laughs> but that is, uh, that is known, and I needn't actually elaborate on it. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, the point I'm making is this. Nowhere in that interview 
Did you hear any, alleg any allegation on Jaramogi, Jaramogi in his own words about favoring the East? It's about East and West and balancing it. And he says, I'm an African nationalist first and foremost. If you miss that about Jaramogi's life, you'll miss everything. I'm an African nationalist. There is a very strong story, which you ought to remember, about the humiliation him and his generation went through when they were young and working in this country. At one point, when he was, when he was at Maseno as a headmaster of, of the primary school, the Mzungu, who was his boss, tells him, you don't have the brains of my six-year-old. You black people are sending Mr. Madhu to legislative council, but you don't have the brains of my six-year-old. Jaramogi spends about three pages talking about that story. When he says I'm an African nationalist and I might be fighting for African people, it goes way back, the bitterness, the anger, and the humiliation. Let's not forget that before you get into the propaganda. Second point, I had and wanted you to look at this picture here. This is cow in 1952, just before the emergency broke out. I want you to look at it because it's not very clear, but Jaramogi is, well, that circle at the corner there, there's Jomo Kenyatta in the middle. Underneath here at the bottom, is Dedan Kimathi. This photograph puts Jaramogi, Dedan Kimathi in one place, in one day. But history is not as written, giving us that connection between the two and all the others. There is Kubai at the back, there is Jesse Kariuki. There is uh, Chief Koinange who was arrested after this. We don't know the identities of all these people. Once we digitize this photograph so that you can see the faces more clearly, we will identify who's here. By the way, Jaramogi is in a suit and a tie. This is 1952. So he tells you how much the transitions are taking place. But there's a story in this and a whole lot of other photographs that you can get. Today, Kimathi occupies a larger-than-life place in our nationalism. No guerrilla leader fights without political backup and without the backup of peasants in society. There is a connection here you will not see in the literature so far. We can do the research and bring it to you. If we do it right, the other point I wanted to make before I sit down has to do with the legacy of Jaramogi in ways we don't often recognize. I've just mentioned that it was him who delivered the instruments of Kenya's membership to the United Nations in 1964 after independence. Jaramogi also represented Kenya at the founding of the Organization of African Unity in May 1963. The documents accessing membership of Kenya to OAU, that's Jaramogi's legacy. This coat of arms, again, I would like you to look at it because when you look at the Jogo and the axe, I ask students what does it mean and they say, well, the Jogo was from Kanu and the axe is there because it shows how strong Kanu was. This Jogo and the axe is a legacy of Jaramogi. In Luo culture, when a young man leaves a Simba and is founding his home, he comes with a what? What does he provide? An axe and a cockerel. This is what you're seeing there. And this is the mind at the onset of our independence of this new house which is being built 
which must have an axe and a cockerel. You know, I know, I know, I've been taught by masters of this trade, Lua elders. If the cockerel and the axe are intact, the following morning, the omens are good. Proceed. And uh, one of the ministers says, I've got it right, 100%. Thank you. Over there, <laughs> over there at Langata, where Prime Minister, you've done a great job with former President Uhuru Mwagai Kenyatta to commemorate our, the scene of why we got our independence. The night before, traditional leaders from all communities went and performed the ritual of starting a new home. And Jeromogi made sure there was an axe and a cockerel. The following morning, they were intact which means the omens are good. So don't be discouraged as Kenyans. The chicken was there, the axe was there. And the Prime Minister has built, with support of the President, this museum. Tomorrow we'll go and proceed from there. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable. Because that's a continuation of that. Thank you very much, Mike. You people, more history will come to you as we go by in the years to come. Let me now call my friend Olara Otunu from Uganda, from Lira, Acholiland. A great nationalist in Uganda, a brilliant politician, a brilliant scholar. Thank you. Omera Dr. Uru, Omera PM Raila, Mama Aida, Mama Margaret Kenyatta, brothers and sisters, Governor James Orengo, my old friend, and Governor Professor Peter Nyongo, I greet all of you. I have come from Uganda with a strong delegation. There is no time to introduce them to you. We have come to pay tribute. We have come to pay tribute to Woodlamogi, Oteramewa, La Wilueng Oluma, we have come to tribute to him with you. In Uganda, there is great excitement. As we were trekking our way here, we kept receiving messages from people who were wishing us well on this occasion. So, PM and Dr. Oburu and the entire family, thank you for organizing this. We thank you. Because of time constraint, I will be very schematic. We grew up in the powerful shadow in East Africa of the figures that you saw in the photograph that uh, Dr. Michael Chege just showed us. Built at Kagea, Arguing Kodek, Acheng Oneko, Pio Gama Pinto, Paul Ngei, later on we would add uh, J.M. Kariuki, Taita Towet. We grew up in the powerful shadow of these nationalists. I, of course, didn't know Jaramogi then. I didn't know him in Kenya. But I was very fortunate I would get to know him in New York as his resident assistant. Jaramogi in the early 80s who traveled to New York because he had an NGO registered with the United Nations and also come to New York to organize to travel to neighboring countries. And I was there for his resident assistant in New York and very fortunate to spend a long number of hours with him. I just want to say this. First, Jaramogi could have become a historic president of Kenya. He did not. But he became somebody more important, with an impact more durable, because he led by example. Because he led and lived by his conviction. 
Jaramogi therefore left a powerful legacy for all of us. The second thing I want to say is that I was struck by the virtues, by the attributes that were so self-evident in Jaramogi. His faithfulness to the people, his courage, his sense of duty, his tenacity in the struggle, and very rare, his self-denial. Denying himself in order to serve the greater good of the community. Jaramogi was also, in spite of his suffering for many years, always committed to reconciliation. These are attributes which, in my view, were not accidental. The Luo elders have attributes which are expected of them, as Jodito Pacho, and these attributes of Jaramogi come straight from that tradition. May God bless him for all that. Thirdly, I was struck that Jaramogi, among the African leaders, was a deeply rooted leader. Rooted in his own culture, in his tradition, in the history of his people. That is what gave Jaramogi the confidence to be so open and so cosmopolitan and to accept other cultures and tradition and not be threatened by any of that. He made friends all over. You cannot be a great leader in Africa if you are floating in thin air. You have no roots. It's like a court B-Tech song of Laweno. Without that being the authentic voice of his mother, written in the idiom and rhythm and meaning of his own people, it would not have made the impact it did. So in the political arena, Jaramogi was the equivalent. His rootedness made him a more authentic nationalist in Kenya. He made him a more powerful, convincing Pan-Africanist. How I wish that more of our leaders today would have those virtues. Then let me say this. Before Jaramogi, Bobby Marley said and sang, we cannot sing the Lord's song in a strange land. We cannot sing the Lord's song in the land of not yet Uhuru. Jaramogi particularly provided this dirge, this soul searching, this creed occurred because of the wholesale plunder that some of our leaders are doing to our country. Not corruption. Corruption is a polite word. Wholesale plunder that is taking place. Jaramogi spoke of not yet Uhuru because he was opposed to some of the African leaders manipulating our ethnic diversity and richness to divide our people. Jaramogi never accepted this. Jaramogi said, not yet Uhuru, because he wanted power to be with our people, to elect those that should govern them, and not the string of rigged elections. And Jaramogi said, not yet Uhuru, because he believed in an egalitarian society, a society in which a child from the remotest village in Kenya can become Professor Nyang Nyongo, 
A child from the rural areas and the slum can tomorrow become Dr. Uburu. He believed with all his heart in that, in providing equality of opportunities. So, if we are today celebrating the life and contribution of Jaramogi, are we prepared to be worthy heirs of Jaramogi? Are we especially address this to the leaders and the intelligentsia? Joma Wangu Yabe. Are you prepared to be worthy heirs of Jaramogi's legacy? To fight the fight that he left midway. It is the unfinished business of not yet Uhuru. Are we prepared to accomplish that struggle? That is the meaning of today's gathering. And if we live here determined to accomplish the unfinished business that Jaramogi started, then I'll say, what the Mogi, what Kikuch, Oterawa, Yue Kikuch, La Wirwuri, Yue Kikuch, La Wimon, Pien, Wabichobo, what my Megi, Wabichobo, Lueng, my child. So, Jaramogi, rest in peace. This mission will be accomplished. Poyo, Ero Kamano. Aya. Poyo, Ero Kamano. Asante. Thank you very much. Let me take this opportunity just to introduce the governors who are here and to ask Governor Abdul Swamad, Sheriff Nasir, to say a word or two on their uh, Apart from the first lady who is not a governor, my wife, she, you, you are in that category. Thank you very much. <laughs> just stand up so that they know that I'm not. Governor James Orengo of Siaya. Jim. Thank you very much, Jim. Governor Gladys Wanga of Homer Bay, the indomitable lady. Thank you very much, Gladys. Governor Ochilo Aya. Thank you very much. Governor Simba Arati from Kisi. Wapi Simba. Akwapa. Governor. Abdul Swamad Sheriff Nasir, I will introduce you. You will come over. Then we have Governor Gideon Mungaro. Gideon, you copy. He's not here. Then Governor uh, Wilbur Fototichilo. Are here? Any other governor I've not mentioned? Now, I'm sure when Moses Kuria came, you didn't see him. Mweshimiwa waziri. Head of public service. Kifanya nyoko nyoko wata muona basi. Aya. Then. My deputy governor, governor Willy. Magwanga from Homer Bay. Thank you very much. And Dofiti Governor Dr. Joseph Mahiri. Aya. Now I'll ask Alicia Oraro, the Deputy Speaker. Sumbu Assembly here, Nereo Kombo, Deputy Speaker, Honorable Ken Oko, please. Uh, Majority Leader. And Honorable Adui Nyang, Chief Whip. I assent Adui. And finally. Now, finally, can I ask? Let me just give a chance to Governor, because he's Nahari, he wants to catch a plane. Then I'll ask Wandai. Pardon? Pardon? Okay. Let me ask Wandai. Just a minute. Where's Wandai? Uh, oh, come, come introduce the, the, the MP, sorry. Uh, 
uh, on behalf of my colleague members of National Assembly, join the family of Jaramogi. Demise. But let me also say this before I introduce my colleagues who are too young to have interacted with Jaramogi closely have had the rare opportunity and chance to be mentored by Baba Raila Odinga. And since we have been mentored properly by Baba, by extension we have been mentored by use this occasion to take stock of the gains, the gains we have been able to make and possibly the losses we might have incurred along the way as we march forward. And let me also commit finally And to walk the journey. Kuro yenauru, mwanda ito aduusu wa bunge mankind. Let me just ask you to stand up. As I mention your name, you sit down. But let me start with the national chairman of ODM, the Honorable John Mbadi, who is also nominated MP. We have in our midst, of course, the county men leader or MP for Kisumu County, Ruth Odinga. The Honorable Anthony Oluoch of Madare. The Honorable Ben Suda of Homa Bay. The Honorable Adipo Kwame of Karachuanyo. The Honorable Martin Ward Chief of Ndiwa. Obara, Eve Obara of Kabondo Kasipul. The Honorable Kajuang of Raraka. The Honorable Tomo de Rosa. The Honorable Sir Charles Ongondo Were of Kasipol. The Honorable the Indomitable Lady. Honorable Zam Zam of Mombasa. The Honorable Fulangege Badi Twalib of Jomvu, Mombasa. The Honorable Dr. James Nikal. The Honorable Oku Kaunya of Teso North. The Honorable Aduma Oku. I have also been asked to introduce the Deputy Leader of Minority. The MP for Kisumu Central. Of course, Ron must be introduced in a special way. Ah, yeah. The Senate, who is also the Senator for Kitui. As we conclude and introduce, yes. Of course, uh, Wambua will introduce the senators, including the SG of the party. I also want to acknowledge the presence of all other guests who have come here, including the Hiya, Karibu Senator Enoch Wambua. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Excellency Raila, Father Jaramogi. Be very brief, Excellency. I come all the way from Ukam. Eastern region. To also represent the Waipa Party leader, His Excellency, as today, 
because he has been invited to the DRC Oh, he is there with our president is our president see and I know my brother Moses is here I know for a fact that the government of William Samoy Ruto was not invited because they have messed up protocol with our region Si tumeambiwa mzee yote alikuwa anasema ukweli na sisi si tuseme tu a lot of respect for three people three leaders in this country the first respect, and that is why i am here on a saturday because when he had an opportunity to form government and become president of the republic of kenya he passed that opportunity and said we can never do it for as long as Johnston Jomo Kenyatta in distinction the second person that I have a lot of respect for is our leader in Azimio Raila Amolo Odinga 2002 vile aliangalia akaona viongozi they cannot agree on who will form the government of the republic of Emilio Stanley Mwai Kibaki and with those words this man liberated us from the many many years of dark rule of Kanu that's the man for whom I'm here to bring his Kalonzo Musyoka who in the year 2013 share of his presidential ambitions In 2017, he shared his ambition and stood firmly behind. I want to introduce the senator of of ODM the biggest political party in this part of the region not just in Kenya East and Central Africa just come and say a word as we introduce the rest of the senators who are here uh, we introduce you and I know kuna senator na sijui ameenda wapi na tuko hapa kwao nyumbani Mmemuona ma Tembea anatafuta au oh, senator Simoni Baba there is one thing we have to do in a tickets zimio na wametoroka chama political parties now must test every article of the constitution and every section of the law we must withdraw our sponsorship from those leaders fresh elections. Hapa mnasema nini? Eji unasema nini? Hapo ni sawa. Asante. Rest of my colleagues to my brother, my friend, Senator Asante sana. Thank you very much honorable Wambua. Ah, uh, your excellency. Thank all of you. Allow me to introduce the senators in the house today. I start with the in the Senate Honorable Oburu Odinga Thank you very much From Homa Bay na anafikanga mpaka huku yote Your Excellency allow me to introduce also the Senator for Migori my brother Edi Mwokratego
Committee and the Senator for Homa Bay, Honorable Senator Moses Kajwang. Asante sana down to the family of Jaramogi Ogingo Dinga. It has been the honor of my life. Family to walk.
Wamesema hiyo ulikuwa una hiyo ilikuwa tu curtain raiser so they want you to sing Atarudi Atarudi, Atarudi. naona naona pale na niombe sasa 
sote tusimame kwa heshima maombi hayo yakiombwa kwa taadhi makuu ili tumkaribishe mgeni wetu wa heshima nitie msanii atakayeimba wakati mgeni anaingia Cultural tafadhali kujeni Kisumu cultural Kisumu on cultural stage. Chap chap on stage Kisumu cultural mbio mbio Kisumu cultural next on stage May I request that we all put our hands together in a respectful round of applause when our chief guests and other dignitaries come in Makofi tafadhali Makofi mazuri tena Makofi tafadhali makofi As we are standing may I request that we stand at attention all unofficial headgear I with all humility request that we remove in readiness for the national anthem of the Republic of Kenya and the East African Community Anthem. I will also request that as these anthems play, may we sing along as a sign of patriotism as they will suffice for our prayer for this gathering national anthem studio national anthem may i request that we sing and i shall lead seated your excellency engineer dr raila amolo odinga your excellency dr aida odinga immediate former first lady of the republic of kenya honorable dr margaret kenyatta The family of Kenya's first vice president, His Excellency Honorable Jaramogi Oginga Odinga, Your Excellency, the Governor of Kisumu County, Professor Peter Anyang Nyongo, Your Excellency, the First Lady of Kisumu County, Honorable Mrs. Dorothy Nyongo, Your Excellency, the Governor of Siaya County, Honorable James Agre Orengo, your Excellency, the Governor of Migori County, Honorable Ochilo Mbogo Ayako. Your Excellency, the Governor of Mombasa County, Honorable Abdul Somad Sharif Nasir. 
the minority leader in the National Assembly, Honorable James Opio Wandai, and all members of the National Assembly present. The Deputy Minority Leader in the Senate, Honorable Eno Kwambua, and all Senators present. The speaker of Kisumu County, Honorable Elisha Oraro, all speakers present, and all members of county assemblies represented here. Members of the Diplomatic Corps, the clergy, distinguished scholars, distinguished guests from around the globe, the Luo Council of Elders, Kere, Odungi Randa, ladies and gentlemen, all protocols observed. Your Excellency, sir, with your gracious permission, allow me to invite the Director of Protocol in the Office of the Governor, Kisumu County, Bob Madanji, HSC, to guide us in the next bit of the program. Bob. Thank you, Mdomo Bagi, for that good introduction. A very good afternoon to all of us. God is good. And all the times, with the permission of our guest of honor, allow me to bring few uh, entertainers to, uh, to, 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 to entertain us. I'll start by inviting Umala Nyatiti. Umala Nyatiti, come on stage. Followed by Kisumo Cultural Group, Orutu, be standby. This is I have Kisumo Cultural on stage. Nyakusa, be standby with the Dodo.
Nampigie makopi mazuri ki Let's appreciate them Kwa ba wedi lor mos kandiga wero lu holo Wedi lor mos kandiga kocha mabonda Kata 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 Asante sana Kisumu Cultural Group Thank you very much Wapikia makofi mazuri Makofi kwa hao na orutu Kisumu Cultural Group Products of Kisumu County County 042 Now I want to invite Nyatiti Umala These are some of the Kind of music that Jaramogi enjoyed Quickly, quickly. Nyakusa, be stand by. Oh, you might have 
Asante sana, asante sana. Asante sana. Asante ni sana. Nyakusa, next on stage. Asante ni sana. Asante sana, asante sana. Next on stage, Nyakusa. Nyakusa, Nyakusa, Nyakusa. To appreciate, to appreciate my coffee, Mazuri, na waomba. Let's learn to appreciate them. Once again, round of applause. This is the kind of music that Jaramogi used to enjoy. Studio. Nyakusa. Studio. Studio Nyakusa. Baba Song. Nyakusa. Nyakusa. So Studio. Never go out, can you get 
Agodi on stage. On stage. Aluo kaumna kara. The final one for now. Aluo kaumna kara. Wuningi mose luonga. Oburu ritna mna depo. Wuningi mose luonga. Oburu ritna mna depo. Wuningi pinyo se luonga. Aluo kaumna kara. Wuningi pinyo se luonga. Aluo kaumna kara. Wuningi pinyo se luonga. Achano re na molo. Ma wuri tinga wuri barbon. Wudi nyakoga molo tober mo wijo sumo aluo nginga mano chungi kajara mogi sano zero mojara mogi korobio jolu chukudu jolu pe jore tuwa dongi ngato kara ruto serie bade aluo kaumna kara wuni pinyo selu wonga o aluo kaumna kara wuni pinyo selu wonga oburu rita mna depo wuni pinyo selu wonga o oburu rita mna depo wuni pinyo selu wonga o. Awo yokuna molo ma wunya koga tuona kare mi chungo amolo pini luo pejo re apenda ni kara tuundi mage mi udo ini tuona mano biro kajara mogo senino amolo mano konyo luo kako luo to moko embani o ai la me mana kedo pini puro ya wange o amolo kel mana malo pini oseri ya wange ai la chungu mana kodo ajo luo geno kuomi. Hey, Joey, da chungu mna kodwa, juluge no kuomi. Joey, Joey, Joey. Wapi makofi? Wapi makofi agodi? Let's give him a hearty round of applause, makofi kwa agodi. And I want to thank all the performers. Now, let me take this opportunity to invite Bernard Adams and Lo to continue with the program for there. Then the other entertainers will come at interlude. Adams and Lo. Thank you very much, Bob Madanji. And as you have listened to the entertainment, you have seen it is cultural entertainment. And cultural because Jaramogi was a man of many worlds. And one of his worlds was culture. One of the reasons that we are here in Ofafa Memorial Hall, and people have been asking, since there are so many people who have turned up, why wasn't this occasion, for example, held in this, a bigger place? The reason why this time the family decided to have the 30th anniversary in Ofafa Memorial Hall is because it has a history of the struggle of Jaramogi. Ambrose of Fafa, who this hall is named after, was one of the nationalists who suffered and was killed because of the national struggle. He was a councillor in Nairobi, and in 1953, during the height of the Mau Mau, he was killed. And the then colonialists tried to say 
that it was the Kikuyu Mau Mau who had killed Ofafa. And they were trying to sow the seed of discord between the Kikuyu and the Luo. And Jaramogi, who was then the chair of the Luo Union, or the president of the Luo Union, when he heard that skirmishes between the Kikuyu and the Luo were about to take place because of the death of Ofafa, Jaramogi rushed to Nairobi. Tanzania, and they can tell you all the places they went, raising funds that ended up in the building of this memorial hall. So the Jaramogi family thought it befitting that in the 30th anniversary, this memorial should not be in Kango Kajaramogi, but should be instead in Ofafa Memorial Hall to capture the culture and memorialization of Jaramogi, the culture man, and the nationalist. And with that introduction, let me call the governor of Kisumu County, Professor Nyang Nyongo, to welcome you to the county. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Professor Adam Tulo for uh, that fantastic introduction to why we are here today. But as Governor Kisumu, I want to welcome you, all of you, for um, showing such a big and important respect to Jaramogi and Kisumu County by coming here today for this memorial. I also want to thank, well, before I go very far, the team that made it possible for us to meet in this hall today, the history of this hall for the last 30 years or so is something that will be told later. But what we see it here today, two weeks ago, we would not have been here. I want to thank my Deputy Governor, Dr. Willie, and the Minister for Culture and Gender and Social Services, Mweshimiwa Wadiaga, Beatrice, and particularly Abala Wanga, the city manager, and the team that worked here tirelessly. I thank you all for making us meet here this morning and this today. But more particularly, as I welcome you to Kisumu, all of you, I also want to thank the following people for coming here, especially, first, Mama Margaret Kenyatta. You are coming here today, given the history you just had, is very symbolic. We are reliving and we are living. We are reliving the past and living the future. And it is good you are here today with your Dinga family to lay the foundation for this future once more. Thank you very much for coming. I also want to thank very much today for coming here for the political significance of your arrival. Ambassador Olaro Tunu from Uganda. From need especially for a few guests who's being here today as we revive of half a memorial hall is very symbolic. Let me also thank Gitu Kahengeri, Mze Gitu Kahengeri, a veteran of the Mau Mau struggle. I am told that Gitu is about a hundred years old, and yet he came here today to make sure that he's present at this occasion. Let us respect Mr. Gitu Gawengeri with our applause. Thank you very much. 
I also want to thank finally, I would have thanked you all who have come here, but Mama Ryan Bogo. Mama Ryan Bogo, where is she? She is there. Now, if you know the history of that mama in Nairobi and Iluo politics and natural politics, it is good he is here to represent that tradition of valiant, valiant women in Kenya who have been part and parcel of this struggle. And finally, the family of Jaramogi Odinga Odinga, who made it this possible, led by Oburu Odinga, now the Dwayan of the family, and Rael Arela Odinga, Arela Molo Odinga, whose family now bears the responsibility of making sure that Jaramogi's legacy lives in the political history of this nation. I welcome you all today. Thank you very much for coming to Kisumu. We are honored. We are pleased. We thank God for the sermon this morning that laid the ground and the road for the future. Buana Yesu Asifiwe. Hallelujah. Karibuni Kisumu. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Governor Anyang Nyongo. As you know, the Jaramogi family is today remembering Jaramogi and has asked us, all of us and Kenyans of all walks of life, to be here. And after Jaramogi died, again from a cultural perspective, it was Dr. Buru Odinga who took over the mantle of culturally and leading the family. In fact, when he was succeeding his father as the MP for Bondo in 1994, he made this remark that here at home, I'm the leader. But outside there, politically, Raila is my leader. So let me now call the leader of the Jaramogi family after the death of Jaramogi. Dr. Buru Odinga, Atar Komodo, Buru Kaputa Inga Kunja, Karim. Protocols observed, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to take this opportunity to welcome you to this very, very auspicious occasion, a very, very important event for us as a family. And I'm told by Mr. Balawanga that there is a small video, a, small video. A, a very small one for five seconds which he wants to play and then we proceed. Okay. Must be a champion of the social, political and economic development of the people. It must thus seek to report on the efforts of the people to bring about this development. The press must indeed go further than this and champion those social, political, and economic systems best suited for the development of Africa. In a nutshell, the press must be involved in championing the correct direction of development in Africa and the culture on which African socialism as our ideal without the consent of the total part in some papers which when there is anything good about me or good about somebody whom they have selected not to publicize then that one they will play down and even put it in a hidden corner somewhere. <laughs> but when something comes bad about Odinga, they will make the headline. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was uh, a statement Jeramogi made in London 
there was a, a scandal which was uh, in the Times uh, in London and we were there with uh, Othigo Tieno and Othigo Tieno insisted that Michael Blundell made a statement which was given prominence in the British press and Jaramogi had the right to reply and Jaramogi was replying to those scandalous statements which appeared in the British press that was made in London and that time I was also around there that's the time I was going to Russia now uh, ladies and gentlemen I want to take this opportunity to welcome all of you to this auspicious occasion uh, as I had said before and also to introduce members of our family who are present here, uh, the Jaramogi family. I would like them, I'm not going to introduce each one of them individually because there are many. Jaramogi has grandchildren, great grandchildren, and he has, his uh, wives are still alive. Those wives were in the church. If you saw them, then you would know Jaramogi's choice. Jaramogi was a very choosy person. He had very beautiful wives. Yes, and they are still here, Betty and, uh, and Mama Susan. Uh, can they all stand the Jaramogi Karumaindo? The Karumaindo of Jaramogi. Please stand up, led by Mama Betty and Mama Susan uh, there. And uh, Professor King, but she's going to speak. So uh, uh, I don't know whether that is all of them. Uh, they are not, that is not all of them. But anyway, those who are not there, uh, Sante Nisana, uh, the members of my family. Now, I just want to also take this opportunity to introduce Mama Margaret Kenyatta. And Mombasa MCS Tafadali Wasimame Haya Governor Atafanya wa Mombasa Thank you very much Your Excellency In the interest of time I will Wa Mombasa Harub Katsu yuko hapa Nelikuja na CC wangu Na Chief of Staff Lakini kando na hao Tuko na County Assembly members Ambao alikuja hapa As an Assembly team There are almost 20 of them here Zia yatakuwa ni mawili na nina sababu kwa nini nitamalizia na hayo mawili kwanza tuko hapa kuweza kushereki hapawezi kuwa na uhuru katika Kenya ikiwa kuna wengine bado wako ndani akiwemo ni Kinyata walpochukua nchi akawa naibu wa rais na inchi inavyokwenda havilingani na yeye Mimi ni bora niweze kujiuzulu lakini niweke heshima yangu na heshima Hakuweza kusita kupeana na saha na ma young tax wala hakushika wale ambao kwamba ni wajaluo peke yake ambao kwamba ni chipukizi pesa mati shikuku na wengine wengi kitobu imanyara wengi kut Sasa hizi sifa za uongozi za kuweka matakwa yake nyuma akaweka matakwa ya Kenya mbele Mtu aloweza ni akasema ya kwa mimi najiuzulu sikubaliani Mtu ambaye hakuweza kuogopa
kazi kwa vijana ambao kwamba walioko chipukizi kushirikio ndio nikasema hiyo excellence ili ambao nitaweza kuyataja ya familia la pili nitaomba ruhusa ya familia ya jaramogi la kwanza hiyo excellence kwa hapa kama gavana wa Mombasa naelezea na natoa amri kuna barabara katika kaunti ya Mombasa iwe katika kumbukumbu ya historia la pili yo excellence hili nitaomba ruhusa ya familia waweze kukubali Jaramogi alikuwa si kiongozi wa Wajaluo alikuwa nyanzima ikiwa leo tuko hapa kumbukumbu ya miaka 30 mwaka wa 31 yo kwa niaba ya watu wa Mombasa na watu wa Kenya hizi mutupe nafasi kama kaunti ya Mombasa tuweze kuziweka ili mwaka wa 32 nina imani ya kwa kaunti zote 47 ya huyo ambaye kwa nzima alikuwa ni baba wa demokrasia na alileta yale mengi na tusipoweza kuwajulisha tusipoweza kuwajulisha mogi ni huu mfumo ambao kwamba sasa hivi tuko nao ya kwa yale ya kwanza ya mambo ya majimbo leo tuko na serikali za county kwa sababu ya msa... mkunjufu nitaomba siku kosa heshima lakini kwa sababu ya hali kuelekea na nina imani tutakuwa pamoja wiki nzima hii asanteni sana na kama wanavyosema kwangu mimi kis... Asante sana. Thank you very much. Thank you for the good The next session of the people speaking us on Zoom Moses Kuria Waziri Moses Kuria and at least say one or two things. Uh No, I welcome you to Kisumu and I'm not going to let you go back to Nairobi today. Ya Jaramogi Oginga Odinga Baba Naira Amoro Odinga Ndugu yangu Oburo Odinga Mama Aida Odinga Mama Margaret Kenyatta na watu wa Kisumu Na dhulo umor kusherekea hii sherehe ya miaka 30 for one of my alimentors when member as a student leader in the University of Nairobi And I remember we were accompanied to the Perekwa chairman wetu wakati huo Pia tulikuwa Governor Ochilo yako who is here Moi alikuwa amekataa kurejesta 
Jalamogi tulipo haida kumuona akatusukuma kuwa register I remember one time TJ Kajwanga and myself went to see the then attorney general Amos Wako told me young man I understand your position so Amos Wako I don't know whether he's still around he was trying to convince us just accept accept to be expelled mukubali tu wakati tulifukuzwa kutoka university jeramogi ogiga odinga ta mtu anaitwa gerard otieno kajwang na akamwamulisha at 6 pm and that's how i managed to finish my university Kabisa. Kabisa. Later, I remember we went to Bondo to Bale Jaramogi Ogiga Odinga. And I remember James Olengo almost took over. Of Mark Anthony. One year later, and moi said that there is not going to be live music nakumbuka this hiyo wakati huo alikuwa anaitwa kilito wa nakumbuka tukipitia pahali kuna cactus in a very small hole so they have great legend and to celebrate be taken away the challenge we have as we honor jaramogi today that can make a difference i believe and lounge the has lived it may not be from a monolithic thinking as it was when jaramogi political party but we can have an agreement on things that agree on a set of ideals jaramogi ogiga odiga in the town of peace asante sana now we are going to have uh, presentations from abroad from four scholars in great britain and the us who have studied Kenya very well in politics and economics and so i'm going to I'm, i'm going to request them to take five minutes each i hope the electronics is ready university it will be followed by professor john lonsdale of cambridge university and then our brother john kamau who is currently is doing his postgraduate studies and in toronto because in the papers well research and from aka of west virginia university so first let me request professor to come on please please listen to him very carefully Sir David Thrupp addresses you for five minutes. Gentlemen, um, uh, when he was campaigning to honor him today. six phases first the 
Casino, the Alliance High School, Messina. And that period demonstrated I and challenge authority in two famous pupil at Messina and then uh, just before uh, carry from high school. The second period is, I think, uh, extremely important and until he was elected to the Legislative Council in 1957. The Luo Union and played a pivotal role in thrift and trading corporation. And it was to 1957 that he really over the Luo community. First of the Luo of the presenting the voice of the have-nots of Kisuma as the spokesman of the Luo critique of soil conservation measures and Dipping, I think in the 1940s and 1950s, catapulted him into the position of Gur and leader of the Luo community, a position that in many respects he was to hold uh, until his death in 1990. One that we all know about, but which I'm going to talk about perhaps in a little more detail, echoing of uh, the struggle for Kanu. Went to the Legislative Council in president of Kanu and vice president of Kenya to form the Kenya People's Union. Fifty-eight, as has been mentioned, is a pivotal year, pivotal speech, uh, when he. And that the rest of us sitting here in the Legislative Council are really merely his representatives. And Kenyatta has to be released to play his rightful role in. But that relationship became. 64, it was already evident at the time of the. Uh, AR uh, that Kenyatta. of Oginga, of the Jaramogi. Uh, and that, uh, mm -hmm. at the end of the year, on Jamhuri Day, December 1964, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. incorporated into Kanu, in the ruling party. The 12th of December 19... when Oginga Odinga to open the Lumumba Institute, which was to be... And uh, in May 1965, on the graduate... the mistake, a fatal mistake, I think, looking back, to seize control of Kanu headquarters, to Oginga had all been dismissed, and to usher in a left-wing platform. That end of uh, Jaramogi's personal relationship uh, with President Kenyatta. At the same time, of course, you have the rumor 
weapons and supplies uh, being shadowed by the Royal Navy. Uh, of course, he arrived first in Dar es Salaam. Uh, if there were any weapons, they made its way into Mombasa, where it was quarantined, it was searched, government uh -huh. ministers was the that was the final blow uh, and of, of sessional paper African socialism and it being quite Kenya uh, represented socialism uh, and the Arusha Declaration was much more friendly to capitalism. Uh, it marked, if you like, uh, the culmination of the Mergi's standing uh, inside uh, the inner circle that. Uh, I want to refer to what Michael Cheggy said, and I want to talk in particular uh, about uh, the information research section, the Special Editorial Unit, which in these crucial years, 19 four black operations, of which uh, in September 1965, uh, revolution document in Kenya in the Daily Telegraph, which had Africa, and which oh, alleged that Karamogi was to be brought to Socialist Party. This story was completely concocted. Sent out 80 copies, which it hoped would be press. Uh, and Uh, which wanted to get back at Jaramogi uh, for expelling the fabrications, other pieces of what we would he was a tool of the Chinese, and so on. The story of British propaganda operations in the days of the declining empire were not as much pomp and circumstance disinformation and to continue to exert control over a former Jaramogi was the great victim. The fourth, fifth and sixth phases I will the PU phase, nineteen sixty detention and house arrest and 1982 two decades really those wilderness if ford had not split if a <laughs> one they already had uh, 63 election. If you combine Matiba and Jaramogi, two percent compared to the 36 percent uh, by Daniel Arapmoy, but in all rigged even more, there would have been giving you a thought. If the Jaramogi and Ford had won, and Jaramogi had become Kenya's third president, Matiba would have succeeded to the presidency today. Okay, thank you so much, David. Uh, would um, have been very different. The subsequent speakers to hold on to the five minutes. All right, I'll stop that. I'll stop we that. shall re okay. uh, even the ones that have been given here today 
so that we can have Jaramogi. I know we have a lot to say, but it is now five o'clock in the in the afternoon evening in Kenyan time, and we still have one more panel to go through for the remaining speakers. My friend John Lawrence did to come in. And Thank then you can chairman. send very much, Mr. Chairman. I'm very grateful indeed to have been asked to uh, send us and, and also greatly honoured. And I'm delighted uh, contributors. I will speak very briefly. Uh, my former student, David Throop, is not known for his uh, conciseness. Uh, I shall be very much more concise than him. about Odinga's rootedness. Um, time ago, when I was a, a research Odinga, as others were campaigning, he was very busy, he swept by, I managed to say hello, and that was about it. But the point I want to make is that the person I found most interesting to talk to around Kisumu in 1960. Alola. And John Paul Alola was the farmer at what used to be called the native farm at Kibos. Uh, he was, I think, uh, Odinga's business mentor in founding uh, the Luo Thrift uh, and Trading uh, Corporation and the bus company. Um, so that Odinga grew up, I think, in an atmosphere of extraordinary intellectual depth and interest surrounded by people like John Paul Alola, a generation older than him. And I think that uh, Alola, I mean, he showed me cuttings he had made of the East African Standard in the 1920s. He kept up with settler politics. He showed me letters that he had written as an agricultural instructor in, I think, 1914, complaining to the district commissioner that the Luo chiefs were not planting the kind of, of seeds that he was recommending. Uh, Od Odinka the child of, of great people. Uh, and I think that if we really want to understand him, then we need to understand a great deal more and record a great deal more about how L the Lua themselves responded in such an extraordinary creative way uh, to the challenges of colonial rule. I want people like John Paul Alola to be remembered as much as Odinga. Uh, with that, uh, I will hand it back to other people who remember very much more about Odinga than I do, a man I have always admired. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, John. Thank you very much, John. Very much like you. Concise and to the point. Please say, say hello to your colleagues in Cam But currently he's doing his postgraduate track in Toronto. Uh, John, please, can you come on? Thank you. I, I hope you can hear me all. Yeah, we can hear you. And uh, I'm very happy for the Odinga family for organizing things. Uh, this uh, panel. Uh, I'll be quite uh, quick. And uh, he, one, one thing that uh, I always say is that we need to understand Jaramogi within the wider framework of uh, international uh, black uh, thinkers, the intellectuals, and the activists who are emerging to question the legitimacy and uh, the perception of blacks as backward. And he was in the league of uh, great visionaries like uh, Kwame Nkrumah, Kenyatta, uh, all people who are against it. I try to look at him uh, from that uh, international perspective because the kind of uh, he was in, engaging in fighting and uh, if you listen you're going to see that this is not the story of kenya alone it is a story of unfinished uh, business of liberation having been born at a time when uh, uh, the sun was never setting on the empire I think he took it as his duty 
to make sure that uh, by the time of his death, the, um, the sun will have set on the empire. But also, the empire also struck back, and uh, Professor Th uh, David Troop has uh, talked about the, the kind of uh, response in which the import empire did. And uh, those who look at the propaganda system uh, and the way it worked uh, with the British intelligence, I think uh, having failed to create uh, Jaramogi to become a loyalist or to become uh, in their own image, to create a man in their own image, they turned against him and they made sure that uh, the, they, they turned against him and they made sure that the only thing that they could do was to satanize Odinga the way they satanized everybody else who was against uh, the empire. And to do this, I think we need to reflect so much on uh, the works of the Information Research Department and their data campaigns in Africa and in other places. Always me is that uh, we fell into this trap of this uh, misinformation. And even up to this moment, we are still trapped into some of the politics of uh, this misinformation and the black uh, propaganda, which was started uh, by uh, inward to an extent that uh, a great nation like. modification, would think about the politics of genital modification as one of the... And this, I find that to be quite absurd for a great nation like Kenya. And uh, again, uh, when you look at the workings of uh, the black propaganda, or what... Uh, uh, Jim Burns on one of the um, MI5, MI6 uh, personnel who was working in Nairobi. Uh, his name was Walter Bell. And uh, this book, which was uh, released, uh, this uh, Bell uh, started working with Jomo Kenyatta. Kenyatta didn't know so much uh, propaganda. And Walter Bell worked so much with, uh, with, with Kenyatta. And uh, part of the misinformation about the, the coup, uh, Odinga coup and all that, it reaches Kenyatta's desk. And uh, even the papers um, uh, by the People's Revolutionary Kenya Socialist Party, most of these propaganda papers, they reach Kenyatta. And uh, he started being uh, suspicious uh, of Odinga. And so a, a wedge is being created uh, through this machinery. The other thing which we fail sometimes to remember is that uh, Odinga is an internationalist. He had set up what was known as the Kenya office in Cairo. And few people uh, recall the Kenya office in Cairo. And uh, this is where he was reaching out to international figures like uh, Abdul Nasser for help in the Kenya's liberation. And we had people like uh, Odiambo Okelo, Owera Abido, uh, Abdullah Karungo, uh, Kamwidi Munyi, all these people who are working towards uh, emancipating the black Africa, and they were with the help of uh, Abdel Nasser. So we find that uh, Jeremongi was a deliberate internationalist, deliberate in that uh, he was reaching. And uh, that is why you find his friends included uh, 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 Tito of Yugoslavia, Mao, Khrushchev, all these people, you, if you read this. And uh, the other thing which I want to touch uh, quite briefly, about it, is about the Jaramogi airlifts. When we talk about airlifts, uh, people are always talking about the U.S. airlifts. Okay, but thank you so much, John. Okay, um, thank you so much. There's an announcement to be made here, please. Can you make a quick announcement? Thank you, Prof. I wish to remind that we are here on a very important intellectual discourse. It must stop. Madam, you cannot be selling calendars. 
city officials. People are seated behind you for a good reason. You can't be standing. God has given us a sound mind. And kindly. Calvo. Na wewe mzee ulie simama mbele ya kamera. Tuna Livu tusikilize maswala yanayozungumziwa hapa. Professor. Thank you very much. We have the last speaker on Zoom, Professor Robert Mason of West Virginia, and I'm request, requesting Robert to observe the 5 minute rule because we have our last panel Yes, to come, and it's already 10 past 5. Thank you very much, Bob. I'm sorry, just by recalling the times that I'm. Can we? Yes. Can you go out or keep quiet and sit down, please? Please. Re Tafadali. Okay, John, Robert, please. Thank you. program. And of course, he's in Western Finland. And he shared the platform with Musa Amalemba. And this is the first time I've seen Amalemba in their point of speaking and dress and their message. The education of Kenyans was quite a stark contrast. And I've never forgotten it. And the education that reflects the people of Kenya, that is the Education completely, but I'm African. Second time I met him was at the friendly soccer match that he based on colonial education completely, but I'm African. At the friendly soccer match that was uh, arranged between North Nyanza and Central Nyanza uh, to welcome Kenyatta and Odinga to Western Kenya. Uh, I had the opportunity to shake hands with him then, but apparently when I carry out dissertation research, I was really looking for a place to stay. Kind of we need an English in the uh, place in, in obvious and less obvious. Yet threatened to be taken to the central police station for going into the building where KPU was. To give, uh, would you follow up on what Professor Taylor talked about? The 1958 as a leader of the Kenyans Africans uh, to 1959. He made that case directly in the face of briefed before this meeting. Odinga was leading a delegation from the Asian members of LegCo. Those in Kenya were glorifying Kenyatta, as they as they brief put it. He did. Immediately to defend Kenyatta as a leader of Africans, called for his release, and of course infuriated an exploit, but the die had been cast a few days earlier. He had announced in Parliament that there would be a constant first Lancaster House Conference. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Robert, and thank you, David. Thank you, Professor Lonsdale. Thank you, John Kamau.
still stay tuned because we are doing the last part. Standing up for this occasion. We now have the last panel. Entered. Governor James Orengo will take the last seat because he last seat. Ah, uh, Gitu Kaengeri, Archbishop Okoth will come to the second. Bogo, will she speak from there? Governor. moment of listening to the lectures. Kindly go to the tent. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, okay. Uh, we now go to the last panel. And we will start. Hello. I don't want to do I don't want to do And we will start. Who was inspired by Jeramogi? Five minutes. I love Archbishop now. Uh, mine is to state one attribute of Jaramogi, which we see. Jeramogi was a man of giving thanks. Jeramogi not going to say Ero Kamano. Peru Jabiskopka. Jeramogi. Yes. 
Jara mogi bene wa chingore. Kwa mbo gweza. Nisao gweza. Wani jara mogi no kwa rosu e public. Mwenye kane waru. Moku wongo anjisu. Kaka jara mogi. No go. Iko kinyata yes. ne antiri kendo ne antie kanyo kajo biskop mara real yes. wedi kuwa yes. kuse yes. kinyata when it... Anjara Mogi was passing he was mara railo wacho kichame mari himodo kiki and my hands were straight kuwa kuse kinyata Manager and Mogi Wacho, Toka. Now I don't experience sex. Jara Mogi no go on in your side, Rukama. My Toka, I watch a man, I'll be working with my team. I watch you watch it. Jacob. Mama ida tungie yu. Mungi malando. Sana mawacho ne. Chakos. Akete mdo kamoromo. Ola. Mwadhi yu loka kocha. Mwadhi yu loka kocha. Mwadhi yu loka kocha. Nasai uku yu doa. Mwadhi yu loka kocha. Mwadhi yu loka kocha. Mwadhi yu loka kocha. to God. Can I wait a take? Give me a movie. Sunset Hotel. Okay, hotel. Stairs. To what very cool side are you going to hear? Naka South Chief. Around that section 2A. Marco Nibanga and Wayoda. Jaramogi was a man of God. Oh, political affairs. He was also also a fighter for. My bed of Karachi Mangi. Kanogi Kamakoro. Sayano ke nali akomorane. They learned in Nairobi school. James Olengonika knows very well. He used to take the fees of these black children of Jaramogi. Consolata school. They go to school. That is all. There are more games. Nyakane. What one is there a movie? Then when you say you go, God has blessed us. Let us thank God. Can I give you my coro? And he was there. Jaramogi was there. Moting of Kenya. Keluapi. Gimak is a team at Bondo. Dino. A caca negative. As I know me, Aria Comoramati. Aria Pinjo. Bruce. Bruce. Eh, Ben. A Chubu can you hear? The Mambolo electricity going to Bondo is a responsibility to do that on the request. You can watch over Bondo. What is Nyangoma? Nyakolago. At Olago itself, 
a Jewish water engineer. Jaramogi used to come there every day almost. Ero Kaman. No negotiate. Nyako Duok, Nyangoma, back to Bondo, Keroko Chiko Ibo. Submission tanks. the people allow the bishop let's get a tractor to make a road to the hill top of Sarafuango Hill back Kochi Koimbo back be Kadugo Nangu Kon Jeremogi comes and says some of Mr. Kanyo wako on your side Jeremogi and Thierry Maben and again Jeremogi and again A man of gratitude. He was a political pastor for truth and justice. But where there was no justice, Jaramogi did not hide from me. We did not meet where people meet us. We met in our own small ways here and there. Sometimes with the end of Kulu, think about this and that. But Jaramogi was only a man of gratitude. Let us not go away saying he was only a fighter. For, no. He was a fighter for truth and justice and peace. That's what he was. Kanogi Kamoro. Jamogi Chako. Biro Yakuan Aero Kamoro. Biro Maito Kuru Anova Timorene. So Kanogi Kanyo. Mane Koro Idiko Mashime. Yanamanaike. Jaramogu was allowed to speak. He was not allowed to speak. The animal and we are tired. Some of us are commanding. I'm a man. 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 One may also uh, gratitude and what thank God because thank you very much, Archbishop. Indeed, the fourth because Jaramogi was for truth and justice. Next is Jail Bogo. Phoebe, I see your records in autobiography that you and her tried to persuade Jaramogi not to resign as vice president. Uh, I hope you will excuse me to speak in English a little and mix it where necessary with my mother tongue. My name is Jael Ogombe Mbogo. and all protocols observed. I come to you today to confirm that, one, uh, that I am one of the products of Jaramogi's mentorship. I was with 1958 which was then known as the natives area. After the death, who were blacks. And that is where we started with Muse. He was in Ofafa Jericho. I was in Ofafa Maringo F-17. We were six of us, five Africans and one Asian, T.S. Nyanandra. In the city council, under the who was a, a European, 
I was also at the same time department. And during the course of my work, there was a lot of the time when Africans and fighting hard involved in many ways because of my skills and service. You cannot It is service before self. in those days and particularly in respect anybody to do anything and those who wanted back their land there was agreement for the British to send money to settle the ex-detainees who are being released at that time when Mises wrote about not yet Uhuru, he had noticed that the money that was coming to compensate the detainees who were being released never reached them at any cost. Instead, there was a company Kikuyu Land Buying Company, which was charged with raising money to buy land from the, the Wazungus. But even that did not work properly. Therefore, he was very disappointed. When he saw this, and he found out that he could not, he could not get his points considered, that's the time he resigned and formed the party, KPU. I wanted to join the party then because he, ha he was our leader from Eastlands. Every morning we would be controlled three, four times from Ofafa to City Hall. You lie down, you stretch your legs, and you open your mouth. If you, are, uh, if you have no teeth down here, you get relief. But if you have your teeth, the lower teeth, you are gated in. I was arrested many times because I refused to... Re Operation can put up a building like this. He invited Jaramogi to go to India to see how Indians are working to reconstruct their country after independence. And that is how uh, in India travel the length and the breadth of India met so many people the Minister of Education, the Minister for Culture, the Minister for Industries he toured from uh, Bombay to Delhi, to Bangalore, to Chennai, to Calcutta, to um, Srinagar, all part of India. Some by tra tra train, by road, by air. He wrote a book. It was called Dueche Areo in India. Two months in India. He recorded everything that he had seen in India. Uh, that book was later on translated by an, an Indian friend of him, Ambu Bhai Patel, into English. And the copies are available there. You can buy them. Noted Huru is also available there. 
flames of freedom is also available, also available there. Anybody who wants can buy. So impressed. He met with uh, the then Indian Prime Minister, Jawaharlal Nehru. And they had long discussions. And he signed an agreement there with the Indian government that he, I mean, he, he, he could send Kenyan students to go and study in India. So long as they get transport to go to India, they would get Indian government scholarship to study for free in Indian universities. So he then came here and recruited Kenyans to go and study in India. He opened an office in that building called Jivan Bharat Building, where the Indian High Commission was, and put a Kenyan who had come from India at that time called Olwande Kudul as the secretary. To that scholarship program, from 1953, Udongo mamu. Umolo kero. Tomo kelo dongo. Udero joi. Akoko mboya. Mauro, mauro keyo. And out there, Joe Karanja, who became the, the first high commissioner in London, vice, uh, uh, vice chancellor of the University of Nairobi, and vice president. Henry Waridi, the first member of parliament for, for uh, Mukureni. Kalem Bendile was an MP for Omoto. Here he was working at. Uh, SMO Tieno. All those were students who Jiramogi sent to study in India. This is long before airlift. So the package was much earlier than the airlift. And the airlift only traveled to the Eastern European countries. First, Jiramogi had gone on a to, to, to attend a conference in, 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 in Tokyo, Japan, a World Peace Conference. When he was at that conference in Tokyo, he met with the Chinese delegation. The Chinese delegation invited him to go and visit China. That's how Jiramogi went to the East. First to Shanghai, from Shanghai they went to Peking, those days, now Beijing. And he met with, and they had discussions, and they arranged for him to go to other parts of China, to go and see how China were working to develop their country, Chinese. He went. From there, they arranged for him to go. The Chinese and the Russians had not disagreed. So they're the ones who made arrangement for him to go and meet with Nikita Khrushchev, then the president of the Soviet Union in Moscow. So he went from Peking to Moscow and had discussions with the leadership of the Soviet Union. First, in Beijing, they agreed to support. In Moscow also they agreed to support the liberation movement in Kenya. From Moscow he flew to London. At Heathrow Airport, it's when the immigration saw the stamp of Peking. They did not mind about Moscow, but Peking, 
they read China. So he went to China, yes. You know, that was, he was holding a British passport. At that time, everybody was a British subject. And the British subject... So the guy uh, just did not say anything, but noted and I think reported to the immigration. He went into the town. But from there, when he came back, when he came back to Nairobi and landed at, at uh, Jomo Kenyatta Airport now, then uh, in Bakasi Airport, the passport was impounded. They took away the passport. They did not give any reasons. So there was a headline, Jomo passport impounded. And there was a long debate over it. The, the majority of members of parliament at that time were Jaramogi was playing about with fire. One was called Group Captain Briggs. Uh, one was Sir Michael Blandell. Uh, one was called Enes Vasi. And all of them were contaminated Jaramogi and saying that Jaramogi was playing with he who rode on the back of the tiger ended inside the stomach of the tiger. So one said, Mr. D that man must and he will fail. So when Jaramogi rose to respond, he told the gentlemen who were talking that, look, even me, before I went to China, people about China. But what I, I saw, China is a country with the biggest population in the world. At that time, 540 million people. But in China, I did not see any people walking naked. Everyone was clothed. In China, I did not see people. In China, I did not see China was able to feed 540 million people. We have no beggars in China. So if that is what's communism, then communism is food. It's like food. That's what Jeremogi said. You can you see it in the Hansard. Tomorrow, headline East Africa standards. Communism, my food, says Odinga. and the tag of being a communist. Jeremogi never studied Marxism, Leninism at all. Jeremogi was just being realistic at that time. Now what he did, he negotiated scholarships with those countries for Kenyans. At that time, it was not easy to get a passport if you are going to study in those countries. So the Kenyans, Kenyans who had moved out and had, had been denied opportunity by foot through Uganda and through South Sudan to, to Khartoum, negotiated and opened an office in Khartoum, and then went also. Yamogi met them, and through the, through that. and was able to meet the Egyptian president, Mr. Nasser. But I wanted to tell you that when his passport was impounded here, he got a passport, a national passport from Kwame Abdel Nasser. 
two international passports. Set up an office led, uh, uh, operated by the late William Odiembo Kelo. Then they opened up another office in London, operated by Otiego Thiel. In London, Nukuruma bought a building called Africa Unity House, a building he dedicated to the liberation struggle on Africa. And all Africans who had a problem in London could go and stay in that building. And he asked Jaramogi to give him somebody to manage that building. Jaramogi gave him a Kenyan who had been a student in London, and had not come back called Othigo Thieno, became the, the, the manager of Africa Unity House. So now the Cairo office was the one that was liaising with all these countries, Hungary, Czechoslovakia, Poland, Romania, the Soviet Union, uh, uh, Yugoslavia, uh, and China and so on, about scholarships. So Kenyans only really needed to get to Cairo. From Cairo, you would now be able to travel to get a scholarship to study for free in all those countries. Through that program, you know, 5,000 Kenyans managed to study in the university. That was Jeremoki's initiative, which has never been recognized or appreciated because people highlight only the 300 or so people who were, were taken by uh, air, air, airlift and from Mbagazi to, 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 to New York. But there's nothing, it's a drop in the water of the ocean by comparison to many Kenyans who studied through Yaramogi's initiative. First in India, then in, in, in those other countries, then in the UK, in the United States. People like Hira Lingueno, he studied in Harvard. He was sponsored by Jaramogi. Washington Jarango Kumu was sponsored by Jaramogi to go to and study in Harvard. Jaramogi sent very many students to the United States also, and also to other West African countries, Ghana, Egypt, and so on and so forth. This is an aspect of Jaramogi's contribution that has never been appreciated, and I wanted this to also go on record. Jaramogi as an educator. So therefore, I really want to thank you all for coming to help us remember Jaramogi. Asante Nisana, Mungo Bariki.